Fuck yeah. All right. We've got the boys up from Newcastle today. Fucking Taylor Coftry and Brad Bishop. Mate, what a, t- what a time to be young and alive. Yeah, dude. Thanks for having <laughs> us, man. Appreciate no worries. It. This is my own personal house. Yeah, uh, the only, yeah. yeah <laughs> <laughs> Thanks t- for having me. <laughs> the people, when uh, when they probably saw you bringing film equipment yeah. up, they're like, what the fuck's going on in room <laughs> yeah, 210? Just, just Most three, porns are yeah, filmed in hotel 100%. Rooms. Three yeah. blokes shooting a porno on the Caxton. Dude, that's, <laughs> <laughs> if that won't get viewership, I don't know what will. No, 100%. 100%. Um, we do a little beer breakdown yeah. on our pod, so I'm, I'm, keen uh, I'm keen to rip into one of these ones as well. Let's so do it. just for our viewers at home, this is uh, Range Brewing Co. This is called Double Sunshine. When you're in the Sunshine State, <laughs> you got to get some Double Sunshine. It's a double dry hop West Coast IPA. So I think it should be big and danky. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it, eh? I'm. Uh, I've I've got to be honest. I'm not much of a beer connoisseur. Oh, okay. I um. Neither's Taylor, isn't he? No. Nah. Oh, cheers, mate. Cheers, boys. Thanks, boys. Yeah, um, no, neither am I. Nah. What's uh what's your go to? Great Northern Super Fuck, Crisp. Hundred percent. I understand, bro. Don't give me that fucking red one either, bro. Fuck every, that. So many comedy gigs I do are in like breweries and shit. Yeah. And I quietly have to wait for the bar to be like silent and then I just go up to him. I'm like, what's the most thing you've got that tastes like Great Northern? And he's like, yeah. just gives me some fruity shit still. I'm bro, like, I asked for a Great Northern at Foghorn Brewery <laughs> and the cunt fucking for real rolled his eyes at me. Really? Yeah, yeah dude. And <laughs> I was like, bro, I'll fuck you up right now, dude. You're working at a brewery, cunt. <laughs> I've worked fucking at Fucking beanstalk looking dude. I was like, dude, do you want to get fucking bashed? I've worked at that. Go and ex- get me a fucking mainstream lager, cunt. 100%. Yeah. I've yeah. worked at that exact same brewery and the amount of times we get asked for that or something similar to Stone and Wood yeah. was just fucking outrageous. What they ended up doing is they got like this little... Uh, I think it was passion fruit syrup. Okay. And you can just squirt a little bit of this passion fruit syrup into a beer that they had there and then poured it and it made it taste like uh, stone and wood. True. Nice. Cunts were just frothing over it. Yeah, right. Yeah, now nah, my uh, my mixing it, up, mixing it up is either Great Northern Original or Great Northern Super Crisp. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> it's maybe a Carlton Dry every now and then. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. I, ad- I advanced from like, because when you first start drinking beer, it was like Corona or those souls, hundred which is like yeah. home brand Corona. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then we went on to Carlton Dry, and we're just the biggest advocates of Carlton Dry. Yeah, yeah. And then I worked in a trade with two of my cousins, okay. and they're like, "It's VB or bust, cunt." <laughs> and after every shift, it was like log necks on the way home. So I didn't like <laughs> it. Just fucked everything up. Instead of buying a three pack, and we just were on our way. Yeah. If I was to try get a Carlton Dry, it, so I was just like, "Fuck it, let's just go VB," and then it stole my heart, dude. <laughs> Fuck yeah! I've got a tattoo of a kangaroo drinking a VB long neck, smoking a Winnie Blue. Really? In a pair of yeah, <laughs> yeah. in a pair of uh, in a pair of like Pit Viper sunglasses. That's so Aussie. Yeah. So so what I'm getting is um, you just get peer pressured every episode to try beer that you don't like. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. That's pretty much what happens. But like, I'm starting to come around to them. Yeah, so like certain types yeah. of beer that honestly I didn't even know fucking existed, yep, yep. bro. What the fuck is an Indian pale ale? <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. And I then like now I'm drinking it. And I'm like, these actually aren't half yeah. bad. But, like I, I my first like introduction to beer was my mum bought me and my boys a case of Coronas for our year ten formal. Fuck yeah, which is white trash. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, mad white sure. trash shit, and I got fucking blasted on Coronas, dude. So for ages, man, like I had no taste in beer. Yeah, but I was still just like, yeah, I'll, I'll drink Coronas. Yeah, yeah, 100%. like I was fucking Dom Toretto, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's what every that's what every young bloke drinks. <laughs> yeah, though, like yeah. a bit of lime, but you've got, I reckon you've got like three minutes to drink a Corona before it goes warm and it's it's, yeah. if it's only yeah, you're right. Like it's only fucking drinkable, like. Ice cold. Yeah, do you get the lemons or lime? No, dude, nah, never, dude. Never? I told you, I'm white trash, dude. That's fucking, that's for gay people. <laughs> that, was, that was an added expense and yeah. his family was like, we're not fucking getting you a lime. For sure. Yeah. My dad's like, if anyone has to put fruit in a beer, they're a fucking yeah. fruit. I was, yeah. like, <laughs> I was like, fuck, how do I tell dad that I'm a massive fruit? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I got to hide my fucking, my craft beer addiction from yeah. my old man. Like when yeah. he comes around, I'm like, ah, oh, just VBs in here, mate. Yeah, yeah, 100%. <laughs> got yeah. a secret fridge out the back that's full of these fucking beautiful designed cans. Yeah. Yeah, nice. definitely. I um I pulled beers at a country bolo, and the only two beers that we had on tap were Great Northern Super Chris and Carlton Draft. <laughs> True. Yeah, dude. And Not then, even and, fucking... then, and then eventually we got a Carlton Draft. Yeah, right. Is Four yeah. X big down your way? Nah, we've nah, only got Four X Gold. Dog piss. Yeah, right. You can't. Get, <laughs> it you, is dog piss, but I mean, you can't get Four X bitter. And I was ropeable. Yeah, yeah. In some places in like Coffs Harbour, where they order from like Brisbane, you can get it. Yeah, right. But. I was like searching high and low in Newcastle for uh, 4X Bitter. Yep. And I even wrote to them and I was like, bruh, 
where the fuck is the maroon can <laughs> 4X bitter cunt. Yeah. I feel like the ghost of Joey John's 2005 just <laughs> yeah. like put a blanket rule over Newcastle where he's like, there's no 4X bitter going to be sold yeah, here. Yeah. And what's out of mutual respect, I'm like, yeah. all right, fair chat. You are the king of the town. What's, yeah, what's that fucking, um, aren't the John's boys associated with a beer down your way? Steel Is, City. Yeah, Steel how's City. that taste? It's not too bad. Yeah. It's pretty good, man. Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Shout out the fucking Steel City superstar, Bluey <laughs> Nelson. Yeah, Josh Bluey Nelson. Yeah. That's a guest you guys should get on your pod as yeah, well. Okay. So the Daily Blue Weekly, two of our mates in Newcastle. Uh, yeah. Two hot boys doing hot doing boys. good. They're f- they're fighting on that alpha bloke. Are they? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah. Which is so sick, dude. Gabe's gonna get bashed. <laughs> <laughs> and like Bluey's just Love a red nut who's been <laughs> Bluey's a red nut who's been bullied his entire life and just like learnt to develop a sense of humour to stop people from bullying. Yeah, him. and yeah. still playing local footy at the age of forty, so he's got some yeah. issues. Fuck yeah, that's dude. dedicated. Eh? And like you can just tell that he's got like pent up, <laughs> built up trauma that he's gonna <laughs> yeah. like yeah. that he legally hasn't been able to unleash on anyone outside of a football pitch yeah yeah 100%. so now he gets to go and fight some cunt so i don't care whoever that is <laughs> good luck to you dude. yeah dude like being a scaffolder with an arts degree that's mm. got to do something inside you. yeah yeah 100 yeah, percent. i tried to get put on that fucking card so hard eh? i don't really? know yeah yeah so um I, I know curb a little bit from the two flogs podcast um and i he put originally when they put the post up saying we're gonna do this fight night blah 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 any podcast any podcasters call out who you want to fight and i'm like fuck how am i gonna get how am i gonna get noticed um, and it was right around the time when Ty Tui Vasa announced he was going to start a podcast. Yeah. Oh. So I was just like, bam, bam, let's do this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I would have got fucking rolled. Yeah, <laughs> I'm Fuck. glad he didn't re- re- uh, reply. Yeah. Fucking. It's, uh, it's a pretty wild concept. Just yeah. But it's just like what it is is just at the end of the day, just being a pure whore to content and just being like, <laughs> I'm going to open my gaping asshole up. Yeah. Just for the clicks and the views. For and sure. I'm just going to go get punched in the face by some cunt <laughs> so, like, people listen to my podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's nuts. No, I'm, uh, I'm glad I dodged that one for sure. Yeah, definitely. I hope the undercard is, like, a female version. It's just, like, all the girls from all those, like, slut podcasts yeah, just yeah. bash each other. Well, they announced... Um, I forget which one I was listening to yesterday. They're doing like a lingerie boxing match between yeah. two chicks. Okay, so now, now we're back. Now, <laughs> now we're, now back. we're back. They're doing a, a little person one. Like, it's, it's sort of... Turn a little bit circusy now, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing is a circus. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it, it is. is. We're Taylor, half you, a step away. You could fight in the midget one for sure. I could definitely do it. Yeah, yeah. lace them up. But um, yeah, you boys came up. Did you purely just come up to do some gigs and shit? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. we um reached out to the guys at Good Chat. Yep, because we've both wanted to do that room for ages. Yeah, it's sick. And yeah, we um. But like we really had to use like the we're paid regulars at the Newcastle Comedy Club because yeah. we're not we don't put much effort into social media yeah, at yeah. all. Yeah, yeah it's a fucking if, you, if you look at my Instagram, I think I got like twelve photos, <laughs> and every time I put something up, like I'm like this is sick, and then a week later, I'm like you're a fucking loser, and then I just delete it. Yeah, <laughs> I was like I, was, I hope no one actually saw that. Yeah, I was I was exactly the same way at the start. Like I didn't use my Facebook or anything since I like left high school. So everyone would have thought I was dead or something. And then randomly when I started stand-up, I just started posting st- like stand-up photos. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. yeah. It's the really classic <laughs> open mic uh, stand-up <laughs> yeah. profile picture. 100%. Yeah, yeah. 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 I've still got mine I'll, from like 2018. Yeah. That's fucking, how little I use Facebook. Yeah, dude. I was yeah. stoked when I got to perform at sit-down because I'm like, oh, professional photo. Like, let's yeah. fucking go. Yeah. And the funny ones is like the open mic photo is always like from a member right <laughs> at the front. <laughs> So you can't see that there's three yeah. people at the open mic For and sure. two didn't know that it was going on and one's the comic's girlfriend. It's like, fuck, I'm just here to support. So many people have gotten a really great photo of them while they were fucking bombing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, bombing dude. Hard. I, um, I ate a heavy dick on Thursday night. Hell like yeah. Probably the worst bomb I've had in over 12 months. You get the sweats like up 100%. the back of the neck. Like, 100 Fuck. What happened? Uh, so cool little uh, room for base comedy down the coast. Uh, last night on Earth. Last time I did it, fucking crushed. Like I've heard of that room. Have you? Well, I've seen, I've seen it on Yeah, Instagram. yeah. It's normally a sick yeah. room. Like, it's just a dingy little pub, oh, uh, yeah. uh, like a bar down the coast sort of thing. And, um, yeah, just a heap of general punters and shit. But Thursday night, because the V8 supercars are on down the coast. Oh, okay. So they're fighting against that. So a good crowd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, so that's the thing. They were all down surfers for that. Yeah. So okay. we just had um, – there were five backpackers that – like didn't talk any English. So they didn't, they didn't know what any of us were saying. Um, and then there were two other people on the other side that just wanted to chat the whole time. Oh, I was like, fuck. And I the, hate those guys. Yeah, man. The MC got up and he was trying to like crack them and 
they just weren't no one wanted to fucking be there and i was first up and i'm like uh, i hate going first dude like, it's fucking crazy when you're caught like in a situation where that the, we're crowd members like an audience yeah. and you're just like why are you even here? <laughs> yeah, 100%. Why are you even out of your house? Dude. You don't I, want to be here. Yeah, yeah. They're just held hostage at that yeah. point. Yeah. yeah. I got to my first line where it normally gets like a giggle and gets the crowd like fucking into me a little bit. Mm. And it was just crickets. And I'm like, this is going to be a long 10 minutes. And Shit. I just fucking push through it. I got halfway through one joke and the people that couldn't speak English were sort of, they stopped me and started questioning. And I like, I just lost the joke completely. And I'm like, I'm just bailing out of this. Like, I'm not going to build momentum again off that. It'd like, actually yeah. be sick to go to an open mic comedy at a place where you do not speak the language. <laughs> yeah. And just yeah. hose yourself the entire time. Yeah. Just whatever they say. Just, you're just <laughs> laughing. Yeah. These comics like, I'm really fucking killing this <laughs> shit tonight. I'm crushing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Bro, there's like full like comedy scenes and shit like in like Berlin and yeah. stuff like like in like Europe and stuff like one of the people that used to do comedy in Canberra, like she is now just like over, like I guess like fucking living over there. Is that she, Eleanor Gabriel? No, nah, a, nah. a, well, a girl called Shannon Brooks. She's actually from here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I've yeah. done a couple of gigs She, she used to live in Canberra for a little bit when I was down there. Yeah. Nah, she's great. Yeah, for um, sure. But yeah, like she's now over there. And like every time I see her, she's just like, yeah, I'm in this room in fucking Hamburg. Yeah, or like I'm in this room in like Prague or some yeah. bullshit. Like it's it looks fucking cool. Like because there's so many expats. Yeah, that's it. That you can go over there. Like like Nick Shula has done comedy in Japan. Yeah, when he was in Tokyo because he was just like there for a holiday. There's yeah. like certain countries there that would it. never even like enter my brain nah, to do comedy. No there. way. That's no. um. I got a mate Lloyd who's in Japan at the moment and he's doing stand up over there and he's like, like to me it wouldn't even click to. Even have a crack over there, like yeah, no, and I know was over there one time while doing stand up. Didn't even, I didn't even think about trying to organize yeah. any type of gigs. I was like, no, I'm, dude, I'm in Tokyo. Mm, yeah, hundred percent. I just assumed that most of them wouldn't speak English. Yeah, well, yeah. Even um, another mate, he for uni, he had to go to Cambodia for like a week, and he saw they had a comedy room there. He's like, might as well sign up, and he reckons it was a fucking one of the best gigs of his life. Like, really? That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's just like. <laughs> It's nuts, eh? It's crazy because they're like there would be people that in their country where they're from would like never go to comedy, but then they're like out on a thing and they're like, oh, there's comedy here at yeah. this fucking resort or wherever the fuck it is, and then they'll go. Yeah, it's yeah, fucking it's nuts. crazy. Because yeah, that um Eleanor Gabriel that I said before, she came on the pod a few months ago, and she lives over in Germany now, and um she reckons the scene over there is like nuts, and she mm. did like. I forget what her record was. She did like 350 gigs in a calendar year or something. Damn. That's oh, fucking heavy. That's yeah, that is. my phone? Sorry, boys. No, nah, all good. But yeah, I, I'm coming off the back of my heaviest week since I started. And I, I've like, I'm tired off like a couple of 10 minute sets. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> yeah. I think I've done like nine or 10 gigs and three podcasts in the last 14 days. Damn, and I'm like, prolific. I'm fucking wrecked. Dude, <laughs> yeah, that's heat. <laughs> you're, you're fucking out there swinging, son. <laughs> yeah, I'm killing it. Yeah. Except uh, it's mainly to cunts down the coast that don't want to laugh at me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But <laughs> shit like that's fucking hard, man. Like I did um, Melbourne um, in like 2019, dude. And I think we did like 21 shows in like 28 days or some shit. Crazy, yeah. And like, you know, the other tw the 28 days that we weren't, the that like seven days was at the start. Yeah, right. Because we were just like there as like tourists. Yeah. So like I remember by the end of Melbourne Festival on the way home, dude, I was like, dude, fuck stand-up comedy, <laughs> dude. I'm I'm quitting. Yeah. <laughs> this sucks. Like all my shows were good. Like yeah, it was yeah. like one of the best experiences <laughs> of my life. Yeah. And I was like, dude, this is gay. Yeah. I want to fucking do this. <laughs> this <laughs> sucks. You yeah. see some people's tour schedule and it's Fucking insane. Hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. It's like, dude, take some time. Like, yeah. do you have time to wank? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, There's no wonder time for alcoholism that. and substance abuse is rife in. Oh, comedy, it has dude. to be. Yeah. 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 Um, after I bombed, like, I don't know if you guys know Shane Hunter. He's like, I fucking, don't think so. Nah, he's fucking epic. He was the MC for the gigs I was on Thursday and Friday, and he come up to me after I just ate a heavy dick on stage, and obviously I'm just sitting at the back of the room, fucking on my phone, Devo as fuck. Yeah. And he goes, oh, you did all right, man, for what it is. And I'm like, oh, it fucking sucked. Like, don't bullshit me. And he goes, oh, well, just just think you left your family for this. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Cheers, <laughs> <laughs> <Jeez>, bro. <laughs> yeah, no, there's like, there's nothing you can really say to someone after they've <laughs> no. just eaten heavy dicks. Yeah. And you you can't you can't even fabricate it and just be like oh like I hate when people are like Look, the crowd sucks dude yeah yeah and I, it's just like part of navigating comedy is like all right if this isn't working just yep. making an audible and adjusting on the fly definitely but when you're fucking new to it you just got like you just know what you know and it's like, yeah, I've yeah. got five minutes I've really got two the, yep. the other three is bullshit yeah yeah and mm. if someone like interrupts me then I'm just 
fucking yeah. gone. I fucking – I hit the panic button when I had my first sit-down gig. Um, I was maybe a month into comedy and they put me on one of their open mic rooms. And if you get a sit-down gig, they send you a 27-page document saying shit you can and can't say on their stages and blah, blah, blah. And all my shit's dirty as fuck. Yeah. And I've read this and it's like you can't say this word, you can't be fucking offensive – so I've stressed the fuck out and I'm like, I've got to write a clean five minutes and then just ate a bag of dicks. Like, none of it was funny. Yeah, yeah, what no, it, that do, fucking does, sucks. Does bro. anyone nah, abide by these that's, rules? That's the thing. I got to the first gig and everyone's just up there. So the main rule is just don't say cunt on stage, which... Uh, I'd be fucked. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm fucked. Oh, yeah? That, yeah? Yeah, yeah. You guys drop it a fair bit. Oh, dude, it's like it's unconsciously coming out yeah. of my mouth. It's like my one of my favourite words. Yeah, dude. for sure. That's- I already said I was white trash. Yeah, yeah, it's I love like it. it's in our lexicon. It's in yeah, my yeah. DNA. I, like telling people, telling Australians, telling Australian mm. comics not to say the word cunt is un-Australian. For sure, man. What are yeah, you talking for sure, about? Man. I've, um, at the start as well, I was super, everything I was saying just sounded so scripted and not me. Yeah. And then the last like 12 months, I'm just like fucking, just be my own voice as lame as that fucking sounds up there. And I'm just like, every second word is like fucking fuck, fuck, fuck. Like I, I've avoided cunt, but in my everyday vocabulary that's like yeah yeah every second word but yeah dude and the funny thing is like these are 18 plus venues that yeah. we're performing in if you can't handle the word cunt <laughs> i'm sorry dude like yeah, yeah. just jump off a bridge cunt what's definitely. wrong with, like who yeah. gives a fuck do you it's guys, a word yeah definitely do you guys do many gigs where it's like all ages down that way nah, nah, nev- nah, nah never i wouldn't do it nah, i mean I've, fuck, man. I've only done like a couple of those and um it was like, yeah, fucking like down in Canberra for like a special occasion. Yeah, right. And then other than that, like I never have. I, I There used to be an open mic um, at a university down in Canberra. Yep. And that fucking went just as fucking <laughs> terrible as you can imagine yeah, that right. it went, dude. Just like a whole that. bunch of like 18-year-old, like freshly like 18, maybe 19-year-old. Yeah. Like all sitting there. Yeah, yeah. In fear. Yeah, Like right. looking around at each other for like permission to laugh at certain yeah. things. Because they're shit. all like 18. And so they're all like, they're in university, so it's fucking gay lefty woke shit, mate. <laughs> and <they're> fucking <laughs> that gay, really rolls Fucking you, gay lefty libs. <laughs> and they were just down there. But they were for real, like looking at it. Every time a joke was said, they would like scan the room for like other people to laugh yeah. for them to be okay. And I would like, I said, would say something that's like, you know, not even really offensive, but mm. just kind of, you know, what, a comedy. And then fucking, they would do, they quickly do the... <gasps> Yeah, and up, like cover their mouths, yeah, and yeah. I would like point it out. I'd be like, "Stop trying to fucking stop yourself from yeah. laughing, cunt." Yeah, you think that's fucking funny, dude? Women are dumb, dude. Get over <laughs> yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, um, fucking. I, I was talking about like I've done a few open mic gigs where there's literally like five or six year olds in the front row, and I'm up there talking about my dick and like yeah. fingering my dog and shit, and like. It's, it's tough, crazy. man. I've done one gig where there was kids running around, yeah. and it was in between music. Yeah, so like yeah, this was bro, one. this was the worst gig of my life. <laughs> really? And the guy who organized the show was like, I love comedy and I love music. Mm. And I thought I should combine them. <laughs> Genius. Some some dude who was a good comic in uh in Canberra was like, I can't do the spot. Do you want my spot? And right. I was like, dude, I'm finally getting Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I've just emerged from the open mic. I'm like, yeah, dude, I've got five minutes, really got two. <laughs> and I get introduced as like the band's like unpacking. Right. The dude's like still putting his guitar and stuff away. The guy who ran the show just decided that he could just MC it because he was just, he thought that you could just be like, hey, here's this band. Yeah. Hey, here's this comedian <laughs> instead of paying a comedian to be the yeah, MC. Yeah, 100%. These cunts are still packing shit up. There was a little kid running around with earmuffs on. And I go, whoever put earmuffs on that kid is the smartest person in this room. That made people laugh. And yeah. I was like, now here's some fucking poorly written dick jokes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And just bombed my <laughs> fucking <laughs> dick off, cunt. Yeah. And then, dude, just walked off, walked out the back and there was a comedian and she just came up and put her hand on my shoulder. She goes, hey, it happens. And I was like, <laughs> that was like, it was, she didn't try sugarcoat at all. Yeah. She's like, if you do this long enough, that's just going to happen to you. And that's why I always tell people, hey, these things, sometimes these things happen. Yeah. I won't lie to a cunt and be like, oh yeah, it was the audience. Yeah. It was you, cunt. You were the one with the microphone. I yeah. remember someone told me about six months in, they're like, because I was getting tangled up in the whole open mic fucking bullshit of, oh, this crowd's shit or fucking blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, this crowd's shit. And then one of the bigger guys pulled me to the side one night and he's like, you should be able to win over any crowd in the room. He's like, yeah, maybe like a crowd here and there might not buy into it, but he's like, you should like hone your skills so much that there should be something you should be able to crack the crowd with. Yeah. yeah. 
But and I, you I'm, get like more into comedy, and you can really tell when a crowd is shit for sure. Yeah, and it's not anywhere near as often yep. as you thought yeah, when yeah, you exactly. were. 11 months into comedy, yeah. still yeah, doing ex- open mics, exactly. just being like, this sucks, bro. These people are dumb. Yeah. <laughs> and you just, you, you just bombed yeah. talking for like a, about bullshit that wasn't written down probably yeah, for yeah. like five minutes. 12 yeah. months in, you're like, I haven't had a good crowd yet. This is fucked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's with all these cunts? Where are they going yeah, from? Yeah. While simultaneously just being like, bro, dude, I should be on the gala. Yeah. Be- <laughs> dude, <laughs> Raw's rigged. Dude, Raw's fucked. I 100%. Like, this, this, is embarrass- <laughs> this is embarrassing as fuck. Yeah, go. The, on the way to my first gig, like it took me so long to even just get the balls to sign up for an open mic night. I turned around three times on the on the way to my first gig and I was like, when I turned around and I decided I was actually going there, I'm like, what if I have an amazing set? And they're just like, fuck, let's fly you to Melbourne. Let's fucking do all this shit. And yeah. then I got there, ate a huge dick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I was like, comedy's for me. Dude, but- it's so funny when you first start. <laughs> That's so fucking true, dude. Dude, on my way to my first ever Raw, I did Raw the first time. I've been doing comedy for maybe four or five months. Yeah. And I remember like going to like the Raw, my first Raw heat mm. and just being like, dude, all I got to do is do what I do and I'm going to easily get I through do. these heats. Yeah. I'm going to go to the state final. I'm going to knock that out. And then all I got to do, it's just it's just other open micers, dude. Yeah. Little did I know it's people who are like on TV. Yeah, yeah. I was Because it's an open mic competition. Mm. And then I, went, I was like, bro, they're just other open micers. You're easily the funniest open micer <laughs> in the country. And then you're just going to go to Edinburgh. Like I had this whole daydream. And then I like went to my heat, but I didn't even make it through the heats. True. Yeah, I got yeah, like right. wild carded into like the final. Yeah, like yeah. I remember like driving home from my first heat, just being like, my whole career is real. <laughs> Yeah, I'm never going to make it now, dude. Have you boys used up? How long have you been doing it anyway? Um, since I started like late 2017. I okay. started like July 2018. Yeah, sweet. All right. I Amazing. don't give a fuck about Raw, to be honest. Yeah, but well, that's yeah. the thing. Like, I didn't even use up all of my goes. Yeah. The only yeah. reason yeah. the only reason I did it this year was purely to get on the stage at Sit Down. Because like, I get yeah. on their open mic rooms, but to crack the paddos pretty fucking hard um, uh, yeah. that would explain because i i sent them like i sent them an email when we did get a um we were supposed to do two nights uh friday saturday yep. and one of them got pulled because the show got moved to the to the sunday but yep. we're gonna be at home so i emailed <laughs> sit down and now hearing that there's a 27 page document and you can't say the word cunt, yeah yeah and i have like a whole bit about <laughs> wanting to just king hit fucking bob Owen. <laughs> yeah yeah, right. yeah calling him a cunt yeah, calling yeah. bindi Owen a slut i was like yeah maybe i'm not their cup of tea <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> so it's really hard to crack there so you just yeah, will like fuck it, if i can just get on there then yep. maybe they can see me or something 100 percent. i was like i need a new profile picture i need to get on the paddo let's do this shit yeah <laughs> so how many rooms does like sit down do i think they do like five open mic rooms now fuck yeah and then um if you if the sound guy thinks you're good enough there they'll sign you up for they do like a a mitzi night every thursday at like 9 p.m like mitzi sure yeah um and then if you obviously do good there then you move up to their other nights but fucking my shit isn't really too sit down friendly i don't think yeah because they they um the way i've heard so many people up here word it is sit down's the traditional comedy down that end of the street and then you've got good chat which is like the new age fucking let's hear your best dick jokes like yeah because we went pretty rogue in, in, <laughs> did you in good yeah. chat how'd you go I, I gave the fucking uh, owner you, a heart attack bro, did, oh really did yeah. you did you did, did you see what happened when you drove past nah dude um fucking ses had to get called dude <laughs> Good chat needs a new fucking roof, dude. Yeah, bro. Two, yeah. two Newcastle hot boys came in and blew the roof off really? the cunt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty funny because Jake at the start of the night was like, hey, boys, like, I haven't really seen you do comedy. So yep. just like, just some rules, pretty much just do old gold, like yep. anything that works. And that's all, all I ever really do on a Saturday or on sure. a Friday, Saturday showcase anyway. Yeah. If I've got like 10, like 10 minutes or so, then I'll just incorporate a bit more crowd work or whatever and just keep my material pretty much to what I know works. Yeah. And um, I was like, so does, like, does Brisbane get down? Like, do they get wild? And he's like, what do you mean by wild? <laughs> and I was like, can we throw it out? Like, yeah. And he's just like, ah, uh, fuck, man. Um, I don't know. He's just like, <laughs> just like the crowd's often a mixed bag. So he's like, just don't go like too rogue, yeah. I guess. And yeah, like I went, <laughs> I went pretty good. <laughs> really? Went up, did well. Um, and then <laughs> uh, bro, I was sitting next to Jake cause I took my camera so I could film both of our sets and, um, like Taylor's like doing like the start of his, like his bits and he's doing well. 
And Jake's like, oh, yeah, like, I like him. He's good. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I told you, like, he's all good. And um, he's like, does he watch a lot of Shane Gillis? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, he just has, like, such similar mannerisms. Like, yeah. What he's trying head. to say is I have it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and I was by like, it, you mean Down syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yeah. It's in there. It's in there somewhere. Yeah. He can't That's escape. What half it. of my set is about. Yeah. So <laughs> then, so then this cut, like, he gets to a bit that's all about like saying the word retard. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Throws the first retard bomb, crushes, yeah. and like Jake, like then gives me a look of panic, like, oh fuck, <laughs> what's going on right now? Then like Taylor says it like maybe seven or eight more times, and then like. One of the punchlines is Down syndrome. <laughs> and Jake's just like, oh my God, cunt, what is he doing? And he's like, but the whole time, this is crushing, by yeah, the way. Yeah, There's yeah. 50 cunts in there that are like hosing themselves. Yeah. And it's like, it might not be what you want, but it's what you need. Exactly. And Taylor's given you what you need. Yeah, that's dude. right, dude. Like, I'm not the fucking hero Gotham wants, yeah. bro. Yeah. Dude, I'm the hero they deserve. Dude. For sure. I'm going to say retarded on stage. People 100%. want it, dude. I'm bringing it back. 100%. That's the thing. So. You sort of got on my radar. I think I messaged you after I listened to it um, when you did the Jared Goundry interview. Uh, yeah. yeah. For whatever reason, that circled around our like crowd. Uh, I think it's because there was so much like valuable information in yeah. that pod. Yeah. Um, just fucking sick, dude. We made it. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> and just every gig we went to, we're like, "Oh, did you listen to the Sunday Service podcast? Um, this episode, blah blah blah." And then I've like frequently listened since then. Oh, cool. And I know a couple of my mates that like we. We tiptoe the line as well. And in a lot of the rooms up here, we're seen as just fucking like disgusting, feral cunts. Like, yeah. Bro, and, come hey. to Newcastle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I'm keen as fuck. This and is like, like celebrated when yeah, we're Yeah, yeah. And yeah. like we listen to you guys on every podcast just drop like gay and retard and all that. And up here, you're just like, if you say that in public, you're fucking banished from that room. Like, yeah. Wow. It's nuts. Yeah. That's so funny. That's <laughs> a, that, I, yeah, I, that, I, this that, guy just went fucking yeah. broke. No wonder Jake was stressing because like he goes to me, he's like, fuck. He's like, dude, he's like, I'm conflicted because he's like, he just fucking destroyed the room. Yeah. But he's like, I don't want to have to deal with the repercussions of the emails. So like from a business standpoint, it completely makes sense. Yeah, I do You get don't want to deal with fucking rag dicks that's it yeah. but at the end of the day the way i see it there was 50 people in there last night yeah that had a fucking mad time exactly so if one person I says more than that for if, sure. yeah, yeah. if one person if it's packed out how many people are in there i don't know I like think with people sitting on the back row yeah. and kind of standing there as well i think i reckon I've, easy I've, I've heard i haven't heard it directly from jake but i've heard um a sellout is like 70 to 80 yeah that's what okay there yeah. you go well Definitely. it was, it was that last night and then i've heard if they try they can somehow squeeze a hundred in there, but I reckon that'd be tight as fuck. If like, they push, if they took away yeah. a lot of, uh, at least a roll of tables yeah, and yeah. just had chairs, you could for sure. Yeah. yeah. I don't yeah, think there was, there was a vacant seat there. in there last night. No. Nah. So yeah, like, but all right. So say 70 people had a good time. Yeah. 70 people. Sorry, go man. Back just for the people at home, dude, it was 70. <laughs> <laughs> 85. And <laughs> they'll go back and people will be like, what did you do on the weekend? And it'll be like, oh, I went to fucking good chat yeah. comedy club it was fucking sick exactly so then those people are more likely to come yeah and if there is one person that complains about shit that that's not the type of person you want in a comedy show 100%. anyway no so yeah. weed those cunts out and get more good cunts in because there's it. good cunts everywhere yeah yeah exactly, should be called bro. the good cunt comedy club that's <laughs> all you want to just bring good cunts <laughs> yeah, dude, 100 it's funny that like people who put on comedy shows like that the goal is to have a good comedy audience mm. you know how like when like you you have you feel the energy before the show's even started yeah. and everyone's like dude i think this is going to be a fucking good night yeah. and the same on the on the flip side where you come in and you go bro the energy is fucking weird in here dude yeah. i don't think it's going to be that good like you want people turning up who are going to create a good comedy environment. For sure. The people that they're worried about trying to cater to, those aren't going to be the people that are going to be creating good comedy environments. Exactly, yeah, yeah. They're going to be the people who, when you, all the comics turn up, they go, it feels weird in here. Yeah, I don't definitely. think it's going to be good. And to be like, to play that as well, it, to be a real fucking douchebag, if you look at comedy in the context of it being an art, a disrespected art, bad mm. art as it is, yeah. Mm. It, like, you would never get a painter to come in and be like, you can only paint with blue, yeah. bright green, and red. Exactly. Now make me a masterpiece. For and sure. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, why yeah. are you putting restrictions on how people yeah. should do stuff? I fucking hate it. Um, but, yeah, it's crazy as well because I was saying just before we started recording, I finally cracked um, Base Comedy, who's like the – if you do a Gold Coast kick, that's who you want to be in with. The um, Gold Coast scene is actually sick, isn't it? It's it's turned a corner, yeah. The I've last, heard from a few, a fair few people yeah. now that are like, yeah, comedy on the Gold Coast is actually cool as fuck. If you get in with bass, like 
you'll have the sickest time ever, but there is the sad open mic rooms on the Gold Coast, which fucking, they were my stomping grounds for a good six to 12 months. You frequented that. Yeah, 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 yeah for yeah, sure. Yeah, the humblers. Yeah, yeah. definitely. You've and laid you've laid with a few fleas. Yeah, and yeah. It, all, it, all comes, <laughs> <laughs> it all comes back to that shit as well. Like in my early days, admittedly, I was saying shit up there that, I probably shouldn't have been saying. Yeah, and we I was all just, were. Yeah, I was just finding my feet. We all thought we were fucking Bill Burr, dude. <laughs> yeah, 100%, man. I and did a Kevin Spacey rape joke <laughs> one, month into com- <laughs> one month into comedy, like the week he was charged. <laughs> and just fucking, that was like the worst bomb at that point. Really? I'd done like four gigs. Yeah, you yeah. guys like topical stuff? <laughs> How about Kevin Spacey, dude? <laughs> well, to be fair, I did the joke about me getting raped by Kevin Spacey, yeah, dude. I yeah. was, you know, That's I was still the butt of the joke. Exactly. Yeah. Self- self-deprecating. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. from your perspective. <laughs> exactly. Hey, you were the usual suspect, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, the the sad open mic rooms were sort of the only ones that would give me stage time, I guess. So mm. I, I um, I guess I honed my set in those ones, and then bass finally gave me a crack. And some of the people in the local scene that are like, "Oh, your shit's fucking disgusting," blah blah blah, saw me crush on like some bass gigs a few weeks ago, nice. and they were coming up to me after, going, "Oh, your shit's fucking." So funny, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, it's, Wait a yeah. it's just done a 180, <laughs> man. Like when everyone went really politically correct yeah. one way and then everyone's pushing back and they're like, we don't, we don't agree with this. You're the loud majority on the internet. Yep. Uh, loud minority, sorry, on the internet. Most people want to hear fucking funny rogue shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Have you seen when South Park gets like Jimmy or one of them to be a fucking stand up yeah, comedian yeah. and he's just like, Ooh, <laughs> what about, what about, what about trans people? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what lovely individuals. <laughs> it's like, he's just doing like politically, like yeah. know, correct comedy because like sure. that's the future. Yeah. No, I was, but it's um, not. No, no, like in, in yeah. South Park, that yeah. was like, their, that mean. was their future. But yeah, you're, you're definitely right. It'll probably swing back hard this way probably. where like, dude, I grew up listening to Rodney Rude. Mm. Like Rodney exactly Rude, so. like Rodney Rude tapes and shit like that. I really? used to, yeah, like mm. me and my, oh, yeah. like, and I've got a, I'm weird, like with the way I learn shit, like you could show me a math problem then it'd take me a few turns and then I'd be like, sweet, you could try teach me how to build something on site. Yeah. And after six months, I'll still be like, what step am I missing again? Yeah, but yeah. like, I can watch a movie or listen to shit and I can just quote it. So my dad thought it was hilarious to have like his 12 year old son, like just doing Rodney Rude and Chris Rock bits yeah. for his, for his mates. And I was like. You can fuck a bitch with a diamond dick and make her come ten times. She still have something to complain about. Why'd you have to fuck me so hard? And like, <laughs> dude, I didn't like. I'm fucking twelve. Like, yeah. I don't know what any of this even yeah, means. Yeah, exactly. And they're like, they're like him and his mates are just like, fuck. This kid's a little yeah. fucking savage. This kid's got it. Dude. Yeah, He's yeah. got it. He's gone somewhere. We, we were the same way. Take like, him out of school now. <laughs> yeah. We were the same way. Like the amount of road trips my family did, and it was just like, so dad could stay awake. It was just Rodney Rude. Fucking Kevin Bloody Wilson. Yeah. Like all that, just one after one. So I'm like a 10 year old in the back seat, just listening to this shit going, this is genius. Like, fucking. yeah. And then um, I remember uh, <laughs> this was awkward as fuck. So I said we had Tom Ballard on, yeah. like in a few months ago. And um, I was telling him, oh, my dad bought me into Rodney Rude and Kevin Bloody Wilson. And I said, King, King Billy Coke Bottle. Did you guys hear him? No, I don't know. No, who that I is. don't think nah, so. So he was along the same lines. And I always thought he was like an Aboriginal man, but Tom Ballard goes, "Oh, I think oh that, yeah." Did, did it, would he like call and say that he's like have a call, like he'd call, like call in radio stations and stuff, and he'd say he like might have. he'd have a name, like a he'd use like an Indigenous name, possibly. And yeah. it's probably the same dude because I found out he was just a dude that would go full blackface and do stand up, like it was a white dude. Oh, yeah, and, man, I don't and know he just impersonated an Aboriginal person. Oh, that's fucking yeah, nuts. I know, man. Like, I was imagine born trying in the wrong to do generation, that now. dude. Imagine trying to do that now. Like, oh, dude, yeah, you, crazy. You, I was born all in the wrong generation. generation. <laughs> all of a sudden, <laughs> I thought that was going to creep yeah. past you guys. Yeah. Yeah. I was waiting for like that was that's a laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's sure. a lull. Give it the laugh, guys. Hit the laugh track. Fucking um, the other night talking about laugh tracks, I did the sit down open mic room at Newmarket, and some there was like a musical comedian. He bought his own keyboard, and his first joke just didn't land but luckily he had a laugh track on his keyboard uh, so he redeemed he, himself yeah he just kept hitting that and that was the only thing making the crowd laugh musical like, comedy for me is one of those things that's like for a very long time i didn't like it yeah for a very long time i was like not it's not hack because he's still talented to be able to play an instrument and do jokes mm. but i just <laughs> i just for some reason it riled me up the wrong way until i saw this comedian in newcastle called rummy 
Okay. And he does like these parody songs and I could literally, what like he's got a parody song of, um, you know that song, My New Girlfriend's The Centerfold? Angel in the Centerfold. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Angel in the yeah, yeah. yeah. So he sings a song called My New Girlfriend Is Super Old. And You're it's right. all about fucking like a dementia ridden lady <laughs> in a fucking nursing home. Mm. <laughs> it's so fucking good, dude. And I could watch that. I could, I'd seen him do that numerous times. But every time he does it, I'm still like, this song crushes. Yeah, yeah. And people love it. So I've got a, a little bit of respect for it, but. That's sick. Yeah, that's someone we know personally, so it's a little bit different, dude. I'm still waiting for the day where I wake up and suddenly just respect musical comedy. <laughs> yeah, for sure. The funniest, I, I, is, shit, dude. the funniest is when cunts get Write like, a joke, cunt. Yeah, gets I, like a guitar and they'll like tell a joke, the joke bombs, and then they'll just like strum their guitar. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, 100%. Because like musical comedy, they always get a round of applause like after every like song. Yeah, so yeah. like in their mind, like I'm fucking yeah, killing these cunts. Yeah, yeah. You're, yeah. You're, people in the audience are applauding music mm. because that is the ingrained exactly. social etiquette when someone has finished playing music. 100%. Yeah. Just, would, would you respect it if uh, Shane, no. Gill- <laughs> Shane Gillis' next ne- Netflix special was a musical Fuck no, no, <laughs> dude. Like that's something like uh, you know. Obviously, a fucking I love him, but yeah. like fucking yeah. Like if people who I full great greatly respect started doing musical comedy, yeah, yeah, I'd be like, this sucks. Yeah, for sure. I've um, so I'm pretty obsessed with Gillis as well, and I've been so bad since that latest special came out for the two hands on the mic. I don't know if you do you do that much. Um, I've kind of like done it a lot i yeah, yeah. have like different things of like where i put my hands on my body and shit like yeah, that right. like i like having a cord because i like grabbing the cord yeah. and playing with it and stuff like Dude, i don't like fucking cordless mics yeah i don't like them. me either i i play with the cord as well and i that was one of my comments in my raw fucking shit they're like he plays with the cord instead of just like owning the crowd and i'm like can't i've seen people on netflix fucking like tom segura that's where i got it from well here's the thing bro for your first your first mistake there is taking anything <laughs> yeah, that yeah. anyone to do with Raw. Yeah. Like they have any fucking idea about stand-up yeah. comedy at all, know, dude. Yeah. We've seen the results of the Raw competition, bro. Dude, I I fucking this is controversial as fuck, but Go for it. I'm so glad yeah. there, I'm so glad there were comedians around me when this happened. So I made it through to the semis Raw this year. I fucking crushed that set. Like it was the first time my wife had come and seen me, and I'm so glad that was the first time because I Fucking blew the roof off the place. It helped you quit your job to do it full time. <laughs> <laughs> before you go, before you continue yeah, yeah. on this, con- just one thing on that. Go. Did you get puss? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, now continue. Uh, so I was like, fuck, I'm through here. I'm through to the finals. Was and she relieved that she saw you and she was like, oh, okay, he's not wasting his time? That's exactly what I said. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, if I bomb this and she's yeah. like, you're leaving me and the kids for this fucking four nights a week, like yeah. that would have been the worst case scenario. But luckily she's like, oh, okay, I, I guess he's funny. Like, Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, crushed it, thought I was through. They fucking called someone else who- they were gay. Many, many they were lesbian. Many, <laughs> person no, of color. No comment. No comment. Uh, okay, many, one pe- of the three. many people yeah. said they didn't have as good of a set as I did. And then two of the judges came up to me in the green room at the end and they said, That's fucked. We voted for you to go through and our votes got overruled. And I'm like, What the fuck? Yeah. They do that, man. They yeah, fucking you, do that. You hear all the stories before and you're like, Okay, like, I get it. Like, my shit's never going to be on the ABC. Like, they could never put it on the TV. But, um, Netflix, on the other hand, uh, if they're interested. Yeah, get I've around got, it. I've got a 10-minute special already. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know exactly what you mean, man. The last time I did Raw in a state final, like I, I like audibly had like the best set. Yeah. And so like it, people were like coming around me. We were all lining up on stage, like tapping me on the shoulder and stuff, being like, yeah, you're fucking really yeah. like rubbing my shoulders and shit like that. And then they called out someone who was bullshit and had been doing whatever. Yeah, exactly. And then like out in the foyer and shit, it was just like – audience members kept coming up to being like, hey, you were great. Like, you were like yeah. my favourite. Yeah, no. And I was just sitting there going like, yeah, well, it is what it is. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it sorry I'm wide and like pussy, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. That's why you fucked up. It should be like audience participation. Like, you should, yeah, have, like, a you should have had like a little button, like a little remote or something. Yeah, yeah. Who did you think? And then uh, that'd still probably rig it. Yeah. Yeah, that we, would. We had a comp like that. Well, it wasn't a comp. It was just a, a concept of an open mic night up here recently. It was called um, Buzz Off. Ever like they scattered like ten buzzers throughout the crowd, and they had the opportunity to like buzz you off, but it didn't really work because all the crowds were like too polite. So yeah. everyone just got to do their sets. Yeah. Like, if I had a buzzer, I'd be like, 
Fucking Get them out <laughs> of here. As soon as they're like, yeah. hey, everyone, how are yeah. you? Someone pulls out a ukulele before <laughs> yeah. they play it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, if someone's hair colour isn't natural. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys, um, you're regulars at the Newcastle Comedy Club. Yeah. All reports that I've heard, that's fucking one of the sickest places to get up. It's the be- it's the best room, I think, in the country. Yeah. Definitely. But yeah. in saying that, I've done two rooms yeah. in this country. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We are very biased, but like just the amount of people who are very established comedians yeah. that we get to, we're very fortunate enough to be on lineups with a lot. Yeah, yeah. Like the comedy club's very generous to us. Um, and like they are always like, this room is like the funnest room. Like I love this room. This yeah, is that's the best. Like, uh, like heaps of people are now like filming specials there. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's because sick. of how good of a fucking room it like is. Like Brady is a professional filmmaker, got a PhD in filming. James yeah, right. and Elliot are both comedians. Mm. Yeah. So when they opened the room, that, like, and Brady's done comedy as well. Brady had to make a choice between do I go all in with filming or uh, comedy, and yeah. he he went to filming to just to nail that, and then eventually he'll probably come back to comedy. Yeah, sweet. But they their whole thing was like pretty much what we're talking about. It's like we don't want to restrict anyone. If you f- if it's funny and it works, we'll never tell you what you can or can't do. Yeah, yeah. And as a result, you now have the best comedians in the country openly trying to get on that room because that's how like it's just built a reputation. Like as yeah. soon as someone does it, they're like, "Fuck, I need to come back here." Newcastle is a, it's a city, but it's growing. Like its fr- its foundations are tradesmen, like yeah, yeah, coal 100%. workers, coal yeah. workers, mining town, mining yeah, that, town. That's like, like sick, like the port, yeah, wharfies. Yeah. So is that is that majority of your crowd? It's just like. Loki tradies like do you yeah. reckon that's why you get I think it? I think like it's a mix but I think a lot of those people are from families like that yeah mm. they're right. just like they're, yeah, they're yeah. blue collar working class yeah. people where you know in Canberra it's all public servants there's like there's three generations of people are like third generation public servant yeah. right where they're universally they come, educated yeah, yeah where they come off servant. or they come out of high school and they go into a job in the public service and they're on eighty thousand dollars a year yeah yeah and they have a morning tea about planning the next month next month's morning tea yeah yeah and they yeah, have 15 fun. coffee breaks and you know yeah no that's sick because um that's a major thing I've done a couple of little um like country gigs as well like I yeah. went down to Mwillam bar and shit like that and um, the most fun rural gigs, yeah, like the best. The shit, like they fucking ate my shit up just because they love the dick jokes and shit like yeah. that. Yeah, it's, it's funny and because it's like when you're when you're starting comedy and you're like, oh, I don't really want to go rural, yeah. like that's for losers. But then when you go out there, they fucking love it. Like we did a gig in Cessnock, yeah, like twice this year, and that's not even that rural. It's just like an hour outside of Newcastle, yeah. but. The filthier, the fucking better. They were like these. These guys are fucking awesome. Yeah, they yeah, loved it for sure. Yeah, no, it's um, it's good to hear because then I, like I said, I listen to your podcast a little bit now, and obviously you guys talk it up. And then you've had is it the owner of the podcast, uh, the owner of the comedy club on your podcast. We've had yeah, we've yeah. had uh, James Elliott and Brady all on. We've had it on okay. a few different episodes. There's like one episode I think they were all on, which is pie coke in a poke, like twenty five. Yeah, right. Um, I think it was relatively recently. Yeah, that would have been Alan Brady, my dad's I trans. I think that's the episode. that might have been it. Yeah, yeah. he was talking and about like, his dad transitioning. Yeah, yeah, and just yeah. like listening to him as well, I was like, fuck, this place does sound like. It's just it the best, like man. Like if I if it. I was in your position, what I'd do if you wanted to get on there, I'd just get a good set recorded and just be yeah. like, hey, like I I know these two guys. Can I, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can sure. you have a look at my stuff and like, because like, they they might be earnest as well if they'd be like, hey, you're on the right track. Yeah, fucking give it like another twelve months or whatever. Yeah, like, I don't for know how sure. long you've been doing comedy for, but yeah. they will give you like they'll give you an open mic set if you wanted to come down or they. would they put you on a showcase or something like yeah. that, most likely. Yeah, no, so for sure. I no, I'm keen, keen to make the trek down there for sure. I actually thought that Brisbane would be a little bit more like rogue. Like it surprised me to hear, like you say, that people have yeah. got some tight buttholes. Here. They do. We are like it's Queensland. Yeah. yeah. No, if you get the if you get the right room, um, it's mainly these inner city rooms that are fucking because all the fucking woke people live up here in the city so if you make your work make your way out to the suburbs like where i am they're more open to the shit yeah um, are there any rooms like in outer suburbs and stuff yeah yeah there's a fair few so pretty much scattered from the sunny coast to the gold coast that you'll find a room fucking any night of the week sort of thing hell yeah dude yeah so dude, when I, I was living on the sunny coast um at the very very start of fucking covid and there was fuck all yeah. comedy dude there was like one open mic like a month yep when was I was living up there. Soul Bar one? Yeah. yeah it was yeah. like once a month. And then 
fucking like other than that you had to like come down to brisbane and yeah. i didn't fucking know anyone for like sure. the first i lived here for like a little bit and then like the first gig i did was in fucking gimpy yeah right okay yeah yeah because um i think they've got three open mic nights up there now and just heaps of them make their way down here as well yeah um but i think not next week the week after they've got like their big sunny coast comedy festival thing yeah yeah cool. so i'm going up to do that which will be fucking sick but um yeah literally the last because when i first started i started end of 2020 and obviously fucking covid and all that shit yeah it was hard as fuck to get a room but now like you'd be struggling not to be able if you wanted to get a spot a night you could um but i'm sort of sitting around like two or three gigs a week which it's enough with like a family and yeah, fucking of course. Yeah. We're thinking about like just trying to make the trek down to Sydney more often yeah. to get on rooms. How far is that from Newcastle? Two hour drive. Yeah, about two that's hours. Not too bad. So not too yeah. bad. Into There's the middle of the city. So yeah. Like yeah. that's, so it's pretty decent. I, I've been fucking driving down a lot. Like uh, heaps of comedians catch the fucking train. That sounds But it's like a three right. and a half hour trip, dude. It's like an extra three hours of travel yeah. time on a night. It's crazy. My, my missus tried to, um, tried to make me do that. Like, cause I chew through fuel. Like yeah. going anywhere from sunny coast to the Gold Coast. And she's like, why don't you start catching the train? And I'm like, the last thing I want to do after I eat a bag of dicks on stage is just jump on a train. With Be on the old loser cruiser yeah. on the way back yeah. home. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Just Fuck people that. chroming under their shirts and shit just looking at me like. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's one of those things. Like, unfortunately, Newcastle has lost a few rooms recently. So, yeah, yeah you can be like one a week, sometimes two a week. Yeah. The other week, we did three in one week and we're like, <laughs> killing it. What's yeah. going on here? So, but yeah, 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 just to get better, like, you just need to do, you need to do more gigs. <clears throat> like, you just need to be 100%. on it all the fucking time. So, and it sucks when you've got, because we both have jobs where it's pretty much from like 7 a.m. onwards. Like, you need to be on paying yeah. attention ready to go yeah. yeah and if you know if you're going to do a gig in sydney and you're like the show starts at 9 30 finishes mm. at 11 then you're driving back home at one like you get home at 1 30 yeah. or whatever it can just be fucking a bit it's, tough it's, yeah, it's mental it's not, it's it's not mental. good man there was like a uh like a month or two ago i had a patch where for about like th four three or four weeks i was getting i was doing gigs in newcastle but i was doing like two or three a week like in Sydney. Right. Like I was I had a patch where I was just saying yes to everything. Yeah, yeah. And then I got to like the end, dude. Like my performance at work was like fucking boom. Yeah. Dude. Like I was just making mistakes. Yeah, yeah. I was constantly tired and shit. And then like <laughs> the last month I've just like not been asking anyone. I was yeah, just like, nah. Yeah. <laughs> like, it fucking cooked that's, me. That's um that's a tricky spot I'm in as well. Like so many rooms at the moment, if they've got a drop out, they'll message me. And I feel like that's it's like my foot in the door sort yeah, of thing. Yeah. So I don't want to turn them down, but on the same hand, it's like, fuck, I'm out like every night of the week. Like, And to be honest, after the last two weeks, like last night, my set was just fucking crisp. I knew all the pauses. I knew fucking – I had it down pat yeah. after doing it so many times in the last two weeks. But then it's like I'm fucking tired as shit because same deal. I, I get up at 3 a.m. every day, and then if I'm out at a gig till 10 or 11 o'clock – What are you doing up at 3 a.m.? Fucking wrecked. Uh, so I start, well, up until now that I don't have a job, I started work at five mm, Okay. and I, as much as it doesn't show it, I like to go to gym before work. No, it yeah. shows a little bit. You got <laughs> a bit of the shoulders yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're Thanks. built up. Yeah. It's uh, I can't get rid of the gut cause I eat like a four year old. So yeah. 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 I just drink too much piss. Yeah. And yeah. I've just, I've just accepted it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll never be in super good shape because like I only work out so that I can eat like shit Same. and not get like disgusting. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I just work out so I can have Dunkaroos for lunch. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. How good a Dunkaroos? They're fucking That's sick, Nutella man. in there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, it's oh. got to be like a bit of a rouge from Nutella, like just a bit of brandoning. Like, let's add some biscuits in here. It's the best thing about having kids. Like, you get to eat their snacks. Oh, yeah. The amount of times we'll get to like a Friday and my missus will text me and go, Did you eat all the kids' lunch again? And I'll be like, Fuck. Yeah. No, <laughs> I don't even like fruit roll ups. <laughs> yeah. It's not Are you me. working in a trade to be there by like 5 a.m.? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, cabinet maker. So, build like kitchens and shit. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Joinery. Yeah. Yeah, love it. So technically I still have a job. I'm just working for myself now. So oh, great. Oh, but I don't have any jobs. I have one job on the books at the moment. So that's good, but that's when good. you can just dictate your own schedule. Well that's it. I mainly did it to focus more on this and stand up. Um because yeah. if I'm doing like a ten hour day and I get a thought in the middle of the day, my boss isn't gonna be like, Oh, Go sit over there for half an hour and fucking write a yeah. joke. Like, yeah. But if I'm working for myself and I'm just like... Oh, Don't worry about me making money for my company. <laughs> you go over there and think about your little ha-ha. <laughs> exactly. Ha exactly. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, but in all fairness, like, he was sweet. Like, he knew everything and mm. gave me days off and blah, blah, blah. But it was just, um, just had to do it. That's what that you leap. need. You need a boss that can understand that there's more to life outside of working for, for sure. them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, nah, he was sweet. It was more just a, a personal preference, I guess, so. Feel like I can do it, so why not make the leap? Yeah, yeah. The worst, definitely. the worst is when people from work find out that you do comedy Dude, as well. I hate it. Dude, so just, bad. Just tell me one of your bits. <laughs> Come on, just. Yeah. I'm, I'm cool. Yeah, I'm cool. Yeah, just was... tell me one of your bits. It's like Sharon. I think you're an annoying <laughs> cunt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've just broke up with your husband of yeah. 35 years. He fucking he's been cheating on you with a younger woman. <laughs> yeah, you don't have a sense of yeah. humor. What about my dick joke is going to make you laugh, cunt? Yeah. I fucking hate it. Dude, I've been told on numerous occasions by people who have, like, found out that I do stand-up that, like, oh, you don't really seem like a comedian. Yeah, it's yeah. It's like, yeah, bro, I'm at work. I hate it here. <laughs> yeah. I'm of playing course I'm not up and jovial, yeah, dude. Yeah. You all fucking piss me off. For sure. I'm yeah. playing this job a different sucks. character when yeah. I'm, like... Yeah, fucking from 7 till 5.30, I'm a different person. Yep, 100%. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I gotta Maybe th- because it's 7.45 on Wednesday morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got to think about what I say. Yeah. Yeah. What do you guys think of this presentation? I can't just be there like, that's fucking gay. Yeah. What are we doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, because most people- Why are you I- wearing colourful socks yeah. and R.M. Williams, you fucking exactly. fruit? Be you know what, fuck- Calling someone a fucking yeah, yeah. fruit at work is so funny. Exactly. Yeah, because so many people, like, their idea of comedy, because it's one of those things, like, we are so immersed in it. It's yeah. like our life yeah, yeah. that we forget- that like majority of people Definitely. do not even consume comedy content exactly. and don't even give a fuck about it or respect it at all. Mm. So like the amount of times of people who are just like, oh yeah, I love Carl Barron. Yeah. Oh, it's just oh, like, yeah, you, know you and every, every fucking special yeah. needs person in the country. <laughs> Every Do you know Carl Barron? Yeah, yeah. Would you like his joke about the orange juice? That's my favourite. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just a whole, or like thousands upon yeah. thousands of people every night that just go, oh, I do that. Yeah, no, so dude, many. fuck Carl Barron. <laughs> 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 I fucking hate Carl Barron's comedy, dude. Do you? <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah. it sucks. Yeah. I, it's for I, retard. <laughs> I love you, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fuck, dude. Fuck, there goes. He's never going to let me open for him yeah. anyway. There yeah. goes next week's guest. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm coming to crush too hard before Carl <laughs> Barron. <laughs> Um, fuck. <laughs> I fully just lost my train of thought. I was going to say something before we went hard on Carl Barron. Uh, whoa, whoa, chill, whoa. Chill, 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 chill. Do you guys want another beer? Because I'm, I can grab one. Yeah, grab another beer for us. You thing. two can have one. I got to drive. Mate, you can stay longer. <laughs> Look at the size of this bed, son. Yeah, no, we all have a fucking sleepover. What do we got here? What, what do you think of the beer anyway? Do you want to wait? Wait for him to get back? Um, no, nah, fuck him. Um, we <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually really liked this. It wasn't too bad, was it? It was. Um, yeah, no, it was. It was good. It's very drinkable. Yeah, that's uh, that's the biggest thing for me with beer. The first like, is it drinkable? Yeah. Nah, I'm all good. Cheers, man. You know, is it drinkable? Am I going to have to go <clears throat> every time yeah. I take a sip? I think it just takes me the first few sips to like get adjusted. Yeah. I think that's the main thing. And then when I'm when I'm into it, I'm like, okay, it's not too bad. Yeah, but yeah, I've um. I've started getting heavy into like whiskeys and shit lately. Ooh. Do you guys double in that? No. Not no? Really. I've had um I've had like a twelve a twelve year aged whiskey. I think it was like I wanna say Belve Dean or something. Yeah, okay. I'll have to Google it because yeah, I know yeah. I fucked that up and if there's any whiskey drinkers <laughs> I truly apologize. It's the only one that I could like stomach. I I went and bought an Ardberg that was aged like 12 years, like a Scotch whiskey. And I was like, this will be good. It yeah. tastes literally like petrol. There's so many bad ones out there. Like yeah. that when I first got into it, because um, one of my mates, well, the dude that I normally do the podcast with, um, he's fully into whiskeys. And some of the shit that he'll bring, it'll be like that. It'll just, it'll be a struggle to fucking get down my throat because it'll be burning the fuck out of it. And he's like, mm. delicious, isn't it? It's and I'm like, unleaded <laughs> 98, dude. That's yeah. what this is. Yeah. Dude, the- um, Like taking skin off your esophagus. And yeah. Just like, mmm, yeah, it's the textures in this one. And mm, it's like, got yeah. a nice, what are you talking wood, about? nice sure. woody undertone and it's quite smoky. It's like, fuck off, can't this is <laughs> petrol. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Have you guys had um, Howler Head? Like, uh, is that Dana White's Yeah, one? yeah. The, no. It's banana Banana infused, something. yeah. It's fucking, I'm addicted to it now. It's like, good. It's so good. It just tastes like, um, like banana lollies. Like you can't even, you can taste- an aftertaste of whiskey, but it's just like fucking drinking banana cordial. I'll have to, I'll have to get some. We the Shit. last whiskey we bought uh, was in honor of our Lord and Savior, Mister Joe Rogan, and we bought um, <laughs> the what's the one that he's always fucking beating his dick to? Uh, uh, Buffalo Trace. Buffalo Trace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we bought some of that. Yeah. And um, look, it's it's all right. Yeah, I I wasn't a fan of it to yeah, be honest. It's like, like I wouldn't buy another one. Yeah, yeah, definitely not. 
This is good, eh? This is not Bro, is it? Do you want to have a sip of that and just taste oh. it? Just All right. Taste that, though. That is really nice. Hey, just while we're here, Range Brewing Co. does not miss. That is pretty good. We went to the brewery yesterday. Where is it? Where is it? Um, I don't know. Oh, Brisbane. Yeah, yeah, yeah Brisbane. 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 <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> Uh, yeah, one of our mates worked there, so he's like, "Yeah, just come along. We'll get you some pizza and grab some beer." Every beer that we had it was great, fucking awesome. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah and sick. they're big ambassadors of doing double dry hop, which is just fucking sick. This is just a uh, this is their IPA, it's, but he's lost me. It's <laughs> yeah, it's like there's a the it, notes in the dry yeah. hop. You know what I mean? They yeah. Sing. yeah, yeah. On a scale of one to Great Northern, where is it? Uh, it's above Great Northern, I reckon. Great Northern, I reckon. I, well, Great Northern's the top of the scale, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I don't yeah. know how that's possible, actually. For sure. Um, I was listening to your pod this week and you you mentioned um, – oh, actually, it might have been your story yesterday where you said you were hoping to run into some Broncos greats at the Caxton. Yeah, I did that have previously, you, yeah. Have you seen any? So the first time that I came to the Caxton, uh, we went and watched a Brisbane game. And I, I'm a lifelong Broncos fan. Yeah. Like, there's photos of me at like six years old in a Broncos jersey. Are you from up this way or is it just no, a No, I'm just a fraud. Yeah, yeah. 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 Queensland dude. supporter born in ACT. It's all good. Doesn't yeah, yeah. It doesn't burn me up Come inside. Come at me, yeah. dude. I've You're got the Queensland <laughs> spirit in me. I don't, I don't give a fuck. I'm an AFL yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a new, I'm a New South Welshman trapped in a Queenslander's body. Yeah, nice. Uh, I, I support other way around, sorry. I'm a Queenslander trapped in a New South Wales body. I was born trans. In, I'm <laughs> trans. I'm trans. I'm trans statual is yeah, what yeah, I'm saying. For yeah. sure. I was born in Queensland, but I go for New South Wales just because all my favourite players used to play for New South Wales. Dude, I, I didn't know. You, I didn't, you know what? You I didn't never know hear, did that. You never hear about Queenslanders going for, for New South it's Wales, so, do you? It's always the other way around. And part of it was I like to get under people's skin. In, like back in the day Well that was me like, dude Yeah yeah, yeah. Sweet yeah. And then we went on this Historic eight year run And yeah. then I was just like I just feel sorry for you Fucking losers Like <laughs> yeah. you just don't get it And yeah. then that would just Rile them up even for more sure. And all anyone could ever say You never even fucking been there You never even fucking <laughs> live there Well guess who's doing gigs In yeah. Brisbane now <laughs> That's I'm gonna so fucking funny, move bro. in here dude Riling people up About state of origin Might be like one of the Favourite Australian pastimes For sure so yeah. good. Like, I, used to, I used to do it so good Because it would be on And I'd just be like What? Yeah What's I, that? I remember oh, rugby league. <laughs> Who fucking cares, dude? Who gives a fuck? Two states. Yeah, yeah. Here's when I started supporting the Broncos. So we moved up here from a country town when I was maybe like ten or eleven or something, and we went to a Broncos versus Sharks game. And I'd gone for the Sharks my entire life. They were getting fucking pumped by the Broncos. And half time, I asked Dad if we can go to the fucking merch store and buy a Broncos jersey. Yeah, was yeah. he proud? Was he like, yeah. that's he my was, boy? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, that's sick. Yeah, so the first time we went to the Caxton, it was after a Broncos game. And, oh, mate, oh no, it was, a fr- it was a Friday after a Broncos game. Yeah. And we were like, me and my friend are both just fucking big, thick dick of the North supporters. Yeah. And we were like, oh, what if we meet fucking some Broncos players? And he's like, F- what are the odds? And I was like, it's the Caxton. Like, anything could happen. Yeah, they live here. We walk in there. We start, we start drinking. We see Alfie Langer just running around. I'm yeah. like, bro, there's one of my childhood heroes just fucking marauding around. My friend is blackout drunk. Mm. Like, he doesn't eat much at the best of times. But if he's drinking, he just doesn't eat. Yeah, right. So he's at like a fucking 10 where I'm at like a good sociable six. <laughs> And he's like, there's fucking Alfie. There's Alfie. Alfie goes to the bathroom. My friend's like, I'm, I'm going to go say good day to him. <laughs> no I was way. like, bro, he's going to take a piss. You can't, you can't disrupt the great man doing that. And uh, <laughs> he walks in like the Alfie, sacred art. Yeah, Alfie's taking sure. a piss. My friend, <laughs> my friend goes and pisses next to Alfie. He's like, what's up, Alfie? And he's like, hey, mate, how are you? Dude, I ran into Alfie probably like 20 minutes after that. People were just buying him shots and shit. Mm. I was going to the toilet. He came out. And he like gave me like a little fucking like yeah, one of these yeah. eyes to the guts. And I was like, oh my God, dude, <laughs> just I was, came so you're hard. real, dude. Like, <laughs> I was like, can I pick you up and just take you home with me? Like Alfie. Like, <laughs> oh, 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 dude. Yeah, like he- Just like, on the ground. <laughs> dude, the air like fucking brushed my guts and I just busted nuts. Yeah. It was fucking, it was <laughs> insane, <laughs> yeah. dude. I, I reckon he lives for free up here, eh? Like oh, for sure. As so many earned, of them would. He's yeah. earned it. And the funniest thing was afterwards, we- um, Jarrell Yaoye is like out with a few of his boys yeah. and like he's sitting behind us and like I love Jarrell Yaoye. Mm. And I was like, fuck man, like there's Jarrell and my friend at the Tens like, we got to be boys with Jarrell. And I was like, nah, dude, just fucking look at me. Like just chill out a bit. Like yeah. if he says g'day to us, like we'll say g'day to him. Jarrell like bumps into us and he's like, oh, fuck, sorry, boys. And we're like, you're all good, mate. Like how's your night going? He's like, yeah, yeah, fucking sweet. Dude, he spent 25 minutes just like sitting there and talking to us. 
bought, like bought us uh, shots of whiskey and True. stuff. So we're just sitting there drinking with him. That's sick. And he's like, what do you want to do? Jarrell's fucked up at this point. Yeah. He's like, what do you want to do? And I was like, oh man, like I want to be a comedian. And yeah. he was just like, you got to just tell yourself you're the baddest motherfucker on this planet. <laughs> don't give a fuck what anyone says. Like don't yeah. take any doubt. And he's just like, just work your cunt out, bro. And you'll do it. And That's I was, sick. I was ready to run through the fucking <laughs> wall, sure. dude. I was like, dude, yeah. when Jarrell Yao Ye told me that yeah, he yeah. believed in me, I was like, I can do anything. For sure, man. And we- I didn't want to be a pest and like take a photo and like, but I told him, I was like, bro, like you were one of my favorite players. Yeah. And he's like, fuck, like, let's, like, let's get a photo, man. And he's like, um, he's like, just don't send it to my missus. I was like, I don't even know who your missus is. <laughs> we get one photo, like one eye's going the other way. Yeah. Like, he's like, fuck, we look rat eyed in that. Like, let me get my game face on. We got a good photo. And I was like, I won't put it on social media or anything like yeah. that. I can send it to my old man and my brother. And I was like, yeah, fucking that was sweet, man. We had a good moment. Yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, he was he was a fucking sick guy. He was telling mad stories about Lockie and yeah, right. like being 19 and being like playing in State of Origin and shit for like sure. that. And, and like that's where he, he said he got that mentality from is he's like, bro, I thought that I was the best player in the world. Yeah, like, 100%. And, well, yeah. He's like, I when you I'm have in, to. Yeah, he's like, yeah. when I was playing Origin yeah. and I'm sitting there like getting warmed up, like Lockie came up and said to me, he's like, you're the X factor in this team. Yeah. And he's like, when like he said that to me, he's like, I just made a mental note in my head that I'm the baddest motherfucker For to sure. ever do this shit. And he's just like, and that's why. And he's like, I said that before every game, I just tell myself that yeah. I'm the I'm the best ever. I, I wish he turned to you and he's like, Thank God my fans are so much more normal than Alfie's because he was just telling me some cunt followed him in the toilet for a photo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, it was it, it was it was fucking great. Some man. guy came up to me, dick in hand, <laughs> yeah, yeah. trying sure, to shake man. with his dick yeah, hand. Yeah. I was like, put that away, yeah. dude. We'll fucking bump elbows. Literally, as I was walking, he up. walked into my cubicle. Like, Alfie, how you going, man? Yeah. Bro, I'm shitty. Yeah, yeah. Literally, as I was walking up Caxton with my fucking all my shit, I saw uh, Ben Iken walking up all suited up. And oh, I'm like, yeah. Fuck, look out your window, boys. Yeah, like, fuck. <laughs> Should have got me on the blower. <laughs> yeah, for Benny. sure. Man. Um, yeah, we, um, <laughs> sorry to interrupt. No, yeah. One other funny thing on our way back to the Airbnb, we were fucking blackout drunk. And like, we saw like all like the bronze like statues. And yeah. like, so we saw them well, on the way into the game. But when you're blackout drunk, we were just like run up. We're like, fucking the king, the king's here. Like we're putting our caxton hat on and like, let's drink with the king. Like they would be like, if there's security footage, like if you go back to that day, like you will see fucking yeah. me blackout drunk, like playing with fucking Alfie, Darren Lockyer, fucking all these cunts, all these statues, just be like, what a great man this man is. <laughs> Well, this man's done for this yeah. state. Needs to be recognised. This should yeah. be a gold statue. Hundred percent. If this statue had a cock, I'd be rubbing it oh, around. Oh, dude, fuck! I was like, I was backing up onto it. I was like, you fucking like, it's like that, one of those you? one of those hippies that take bad acid like a bush doof and they start like blowing the branches on a tree, dude. Just yeah. like <laughs> just fucking blowing their luggage. For sure, the, man. The funniest oh. was like we saw like the mural that got painted as well that has like all the Brisbane Broncos yeah, captains. Yeah, yeah. And my friend's like, who the fuck is that guy? And we're just rat, rat eyed, just so fucking blind. Like, we named every captain, but we're like, we're like who the fuck is this guy? And he's like, bro, it's Paddy Carrigan. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like that guy's got a moustache and he's wearing like the old school Powers jersey. I'm yeah. like, that's not, dude, we didn't leave until we figured it out. And then after like five minutes, I was like, it's fucking Gene Miles, cunt. He's like, oh, it's Gene Miles. He's like, let's go home, dude. We've had enough. Fucking, um, I remember talking about like NRL. Great. Oh, I think he was a good player. But when I first had my crack at like my business on my own, I got this random call and they're like, oh, can you do this job by Christmas? And I'm like, oh, it's pretty close because it was like the end of November. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know. And he's like, oh, I don't know if you watch the footy, but it's uh, it's Todd Carney. And I'm like, yeah, mate, I, I'll fit it in. Like fucking I'll do it. Yeah. So I got oh, well, <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here we go. If he pisses in my mouth, yeah. then I might have a think about it. 100%. One of the greats. If I get to the bubble of the great. Yeah. yeah. So it was so hard for me, like doing that whole job and like me, like talking to him the mornings of doing the job, mm. not just to be like, so like, uh, do you want to talk about it? Yeah. Like, <laughs> can we just get this over and done with so I can focus on building you the sickest cabinet sure, you've ever man. seen? So I, I didn't say shit. I was the most normal person ever. And then I started the pod and I was like, fuck, I'm boys with Todd. You'll come on. 
So I shot him a message and just no reply. I'm like, ah, oh, oh, fucking <laughs> left you on scene. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, he's. Um, I remember when I was like, when I was 15 or 16, I went to see The Dark Knight when it came out in cinemas with my girlfriend at the time, which I was punching above my weight. Yeah. Behind me was Todd Carney and uh, Joel Monahan. Yeah, right. This was pre their indiscretions, but little did little did little me know that these guys would go on to have some of the great fuck ups in For rugby sure. league history. It was. Yeah. They were great guys. Like I sat there yeah, and had yeah. a chat to them. They were fucking. They were mad cunts. Yeah. Um, but well, yeah. only mad cunts do that stuff. Exactly. Yeah, yeah so, that's yeah. it. Dude, like pissing in your mouth is fucking is all time. For sure, hilarious. Yeah. That's, that's so that's, funny. That's dude. fucking. You never get caught comedy. on your first try either. So <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. the amount of bubblers that he consumed. <laughs> and I'll tell you guys that. I'll tell you guys this. After seeing Todd Carney do a bubbler, I tried to do a bubbler, but because my dick's so small, I just like <laughs> pissed up onto my stomach yeah. and my neck in, wasn't flexed. Into your belly button. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, delay against the wall and do a belly button yeah, shot. Yeah, I to like stick my legs over my head to try and piss into my own mouth. I'm like, am I doing it right? Just like show, showing the boys my ass on that. Bro, you just need like, to shower more. Just cunt. like streaks pulling on that, like the edge of you just running off your gut. <laughs> oh, so worth it. Am I doing yeah. it? Where's my NRL boys, contract? Check it out. I got some shit tattoos. Let's go. Fucking no. I got a mean left foot step and yeah. I piss a lot. Yeah. So let and me I, get and me I in. drink drive. Yeah, Come yeah. on, boys. Let me in. <laughs> Fucking hell. Um, so, yeah, every episode we normally- Increase my pay, I'll beat my missus. <laughs> <laughs> There's that good chat comedy we needed. Oh, there yeah. it is, dude. Fuck yeah. Get him back. Yeah, yeah. Nah, so every episode we get a guest on, we normally hit him with a can't get any worse question. Yeah. Um. So I don't know if you boys have got any time where you've fucked up in your life or... Oh, where do I start? Yeah? yeah. Have you yeah. both got an individual one or have you got yeah. one? To, yeah. I've got about two or three that I could do. Okay. Yeah. So I've got one that comes to mind pretty... pretty. Uh, well, I, like, thankfully I'm a white person who went to a private school. So yeah, nice. I've, I've managed to dodge a lot of fuck ups and just rely on parents if I ever have gotten in strife. But one time I had a monumental fuck up. And it was in 2015, me and my two friends were going to the United States. Right. And prior to flying out, I, like, I'm a huge hip hop fan. So I had a picture, I had a shirt with Tupac on it. Okay. And Tupac's flipping the birds. My best friend's like, bro, don't wear that shirt to the States. And I was like, nah, bro. Like, they'll see a white kid (laughs) from Australia with a Tupac shirt on. They'll be like, he's one of us. Like, Mm. get him in. And, um, I was planning on going to Canada afterwards. My mates were just doing the States. So we've flown. We got cut off on the plane for drinking too much. Right. And um, as we've landed in LAX, my first friend's gone through customs. My second friend's gone through customs. And I've gone to go through customs. And the lady's like, yep, yeah, uh, where's your, when's your flight out of here? And I was like, oh, I'm going to Canada after this. I'm waiting for my visa to be approved. Right. And I don't have my flight booked out yet because I don't know the exact date that we're doing. Because we took a lot of money just to go over there and go wild. Yeah, for sure. And I was like, I don't really have an exit date yet, but um, I'm planning on leaving. She's like, so you, you're, you're saying to me that you can't prove that you're leaving the United States mm. of America? And I was like, well, when you say it like that, it sounds <laughs> yeah. way worse than what yeah. it is. But I was like, I don't even know if I want to stay here. Like, I've never been here before. Yeah, for sure. She's like, step aside, sir. And I was like, what the fuck? She hits this button. Bro, Shaquille O'Neal's bigger brother. <laughs> like, the biggest black dude I've ever seen in my entire life was like, come with me, sir. And I was like, oh, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> I'm about to my friends, finished. like, just turn around and see, like, Shaq's brother <laughs> just taking me into, like, the, like through these security doors. They're like, what the fuck? Mind you, our phones, like, we're in a different country, so we don't have SIM yeah. cards. Troops have to pay a tribute to this country. <laughs> yeah. Brad was the tribute. <laughs> they, <laughs> a poor tribute for them to receive as well. And uh, so they're like, my two mates are like, what the fuck's going on? I get taken through, like, these two security doors, and I'm the only white person in, like, this customs lockup where there's, like, there's Indians, there's some Asian people. I've watched border security. I'm pretty sure they just had some fish or something in there that yeah. they didn't declare. Mm. I'm looking around, I'm like, what the fuck, man? There's two types of people that I think travel. There's the friend that meticulously plans where you're going to be, what you're going to do, what you're going to see, and the friend that's like, what time do I need to be at the airport? Yeah, I'm the what time do I need to be at the airport kind of guy. So I rock up and I'm looking around and there's all these white people that can interview me and there's one black guy. And then I get self-conscious about my shirt and I'm like, (laughs) fuck. I'm like, I just can't get the black guy. Like... (laughs) What if he judges me and yeah. just kicks me out of the country? Anyway, 
fucking my case number gets called, bang, I get to go have a chat to the black customs officer. I was like, fuck. He's grilling me, asking me, like, where am I going to be? Mm. Who am I staying with? At the time, my best friend had, like, traveled the States in 2011. So he had friends. So I'm like, I'm going with my friend Mike. And Mike has a friend called Will. <laughs> and Will lives in Michigan. And his friend with a guy called Pat. And Pat lived in Ohio. But now Pat lives in Santa Barbara. <laughs> They're like, what's the address in Santa Barbara? I was like, Plah, we're going to have to get Mike in here, yeah. dude. Like, can I phone a friend? For sure. He's asking me all these questions like, where are you going to be? I'm like, I'm going to be in Vegas. I'm going to watch a, a UFC fight, an NBA finals game. He's like, you're going to watch the NBA finals in Vegas. And I was like, no, like I'll go to an NBA finals game. Like we don't even know who's playing. Dude, he grilled me for probably about 45 minutes about what I was doing. And I was just like thinking, fuck, man, this can't get any worse. I am <laughs> fucking going home. Like my holiday is over before it started. And he looks down at me and he's just like, Okay, so if what I've gained from this conversation is like, is that your friends planned this entire trip and you've just rocked up yeah. for it. And I was like, yeah. And I'm like, bro, I'm going to Canada. I've got family in Canada. I can give you numbers. Like, we can, you can call them or whatever. And he's like, dude, you just need to book a flight out of here. As soon as, I, as soon as we're done with this conversation, you need to book a flight. And mm. I was like, yeah, I'll do it. And he's like, I've got one more question for you. And I was like, yeah, dude. And he goes, do people in Australia like Tupac? And I was like, bro... <laughs> Tupac is a god in Australia. <laughs> he fucking stamps my passport and like I end up going through. But that time of sitting in customs, I was just like, fuck me dead, dude. Like, yeah, fuck. This, I was, I was this can't get any worse. I was hoping that was going to end with him declining you to come and just saying, Biggie's the goat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that shirt. Yeah. And he just sends me back shirtless to Australia. <laughs> For sure. West Coast is fucking gay. <laughs> uh, we're, lucky we were in LA. So yeah, yeah. he had a bit of that California life. Yeah, definitely. What's, uh, what do you got there? Um, I got one that has to do with comedy and then one that was like, just sort of happened when I was younger. Yeah, sweet. So, um, I'll do, I'll do the one that happened when I was young because this really was like probably one of the, like the scariest moments True. of my life. Okay, <laughs> let's go. Flew over to Thailand for my auntie's wedding and uh, we get to Bangkok and <laughs> yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, we get to Bangkok. I'm there with all my family. I'm like staying at this Novotel in Bangkok and then we like had like a packed itinerary of shit yep. and there was stuff that I wanted to do. Like I really wanted to go to like markets and like do some shopping and stuff like yeah. that because I'm gay. <laughs> And um, <laughs> I think we'll clear, yeah, we'll yeah. clear that up. Yeah, we that up. And then we get to the very Look at his shorts. Dude. Yeah, we get <laughs> <laughs> we get to the very last night that we're in Bangkok before we're like flying out to uh, Koh Phangan Yang, and um, I'm like, fuck, I haven't done a single fucking thing that I wanted to do. I want to go and do shit. I'm just gonna fucking go by myself. Mm. I'm like just 18 right and my family's like you're not fucking going out into bangkok by yourself i was like i'm a grown-up i can fucking do i can do it i'm gonna be fucking chill then my auntie and my mom were like you know what we're just gonna come with you and then we're like we go out to like these markets in this like huge shopping center i don't even know like we walked there and then it's getting this is like late at night this is like midnight and so like, and then we uh, we were there for maybe like five or 10 minutes because like we were doing so much shit. And then I wanted to go, we, my parents were like, you're not going anywhere by yourself. But then like my auntie just started wanting to do whatever she wanted to do. Right. So I was just walking around looking at like pumpkin patch, yeah, like nice. shopping for stuff with yeah, her yeah. kids. And I'm like, can we fucking go? I want to buy some fake <laughs> soccer jerseys, man. Yeah. <clears throat> so I cracked the shits and I just went, you know what? I'm just fucking going, dude. And I just walked away. True. Walked away. The, um, they're like ringing sirens and shit to say like, yo, we're closing everyone, get out of the shopping mall. Mm. So like out of nowhere, I just get swept up in this huge crowd of right. like the most Asians you've <laughs> ever seen in your life, dude. You think Melbourne's bad. <laughs> <laughs> this is on another fucking another level. And I fucking, so I'm just like caught up in like this stampede of people, like just getting like kicked out of the shopping center. And like, we all just get led like out this fucking door. And I'm like, fuck, like, I don't know fucking where I am. And then there's just crowds of people like walking everywhere. So I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. I, and I walked like a little bit. And in the distance, I saw like an illuminated Novotel right. sign. I was like, oh, sick. Yeah. I just have to fucking walk over there. I just walk in, walk in. Mind you, like I had bought some stuff. So I'm just like a young, fresh faced, pretty white boy. Yeah. We've just like. Hair, uh, completely vulnerable. Mm. Just walking with like big shopping bags. I'm walking by myself. I'm like walking and walking what it feels like for fucking ages. Like I feel like I'm walking for like 
so fucking long. The sign's not getting any closer. Right. I eventually like turn a corner and I see the Novotel and I'm like, sick. I walk in, walk into the foyer and I just like am looking around a little bit mm. and I'm just like, this is not my Novotel. <laughs> True. This is not my fucking Novotel. <clears throat> By the way, this is 2014. So, like, smartphones are fucking dog shit yeah, yeah. anyway. And, like, I didn't do the, like, uh, get overseas yeah. credit because I was like, fuck it, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so, white I, trash. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a so, yeah, exactly. Man. Yeah, exactly. So, I go there and I go up to the counter and I just go, hey, I don't, I'm staying in the Novotel. I don't think this is my Novotel. Mm. Where am I going to go? Dude, s- some reason. At a certain time at night, anyone who works there doesn't speak a fucking word of English. Right. Dude. So I'm going up there and I'm like, yo, this is not my Novotel. Like, where like I don't know what to do. And then can, like, the, can I play the person? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no Novotel. Yeah, this is not my Novotel. Novotel where are the yeah, other Novotel? Where are the other Novotels? Novotel. <laughs> are you able to call like some of the other Novotels to see if they have like a Taylor Coftry staying there? This is Novotel. <laughs> Yeah, this is Novotel, but, Novotel, not, yeah, but yeah. not my Novotel. No, 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 no. Someone else Novotel. This is Novotel. <laughs> yeah, someone else Novotel, not my Novotel. I need to find my Novotel. You own Novotel? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much kind of what the conversation was, dude. Dude, oh, fuck. I'm like, what? And I'm like, fuck. Suddenly, someone who's like <laughs> working as like a fucking janitor, bro, like spoke English. Right. And they came over and they were like, you know, what's wrong? Are you in the wrong Novotel? And I was like, look. I walked from somewhere to a Novotel and he goes, look, there are four Novotels <laughs> just in this area alone. Yeah. There are about 12 of these fucking things <laughs> in all of Bangkok. And I'm like, fuck, I don't know what to do. No one can like call. Like you can't, cause when you call the other help desk, like there's no one there cause it's fucking midnight. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just like, fuck. I'm like starting to freak out. I walk out into the street and I just start like walking. I'm like, look, it's probably fucking over in that way. He, they were like, you know, over there, they were pointing that way. So I was like, fuck, I'm just going to have to walk. I'm like walking and walking. It's all like bright street. I'm having a good time because mm. it's like I'm in the streets of fucking Bangkok. Yeah, yeah. This is cool. A couple of lady boys around. He was For like, sure. what's up, yeah, ladies? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Boys. Dude, I like just turned a corner and like walked a little bit, dude. And suddenly... It's like I was in a completely fucking different world, bro. It was dark. It was like slums. It was like a favela, like a Thai favela. Yeah, yeah. I'm like walking through. People are like leaning out their door, like fucking looking at me and shit. Dude, I'm shitting <laughs> myself, sure. dude. Full freaking out. I'm walking with like these fucking bags. Like I'm like, bro, I'm going to get fucking robbed and raped. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Double R'd, bro. Right yeah. in fucking ca- Bangkok. Best case scenario. Yeah. yeah <laughs> best case scenario, dude. Over a counterfeit David Beckham jersey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to end up on Epstein's Island, dude. <laughs> Working as a waiter, that yeah, would never. Yeah, for sure. I would never s- persuade any politician to, no, to fuck me. Definitely not. But like, um, yeah. So I'm like, what the fuck? And then I, you know, tuk tuks. Like I yeah, just yeah. went. I was like, look, man. I explained to the guy. I was like, listen, I'm in a Novotel, and he goes, oh, which one? And I'm like, bro, wish I could tell you, bro. <laughs> wish I could fucking tell you. I had no money on me at all. Yeah. And so I was like, dude, can you just? drive me around to Novotel's mm. and until we find mine. Yeah. He goes, sure, sure, sure. Why not? Dude, I have no money. He's like, you have the money? I'm like, yeah, bro. All the money, bro. I'm white. I've got heaps of money. Yeah. No money. We're driving around, dude. This cunt is fucking like kamikaze, like cutting, <laughs> like tire traffic is fucking nuts. Yeah, for sure. No road rules, no seatbelts or whatever. We're just like zipping around. Nearly had a head on fucking with a bus. <laughs> Pulls up to this hotel and I go, hey, not my hotel, dude. We go, okay, sick. Driving around, driving around, driving around, dude. Fucking, we get pulled over by Thai police. Right. They just pull over this fucking guy. They're all speaking Thai. I don't know what the fuck is happening, dude. He just gives the copper like some money. Yeah. And then he just goes and then just like walks off. I'm like, different country, dude. Get around, walk, like not walk, um, like ride, ride, ride. Dude, this is happening over the course of maybe five or six hours. Which is how long this story's taken. (laughs) 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 Fucking sorry. Get to the good part. (laughs) And then I fucking, yeah, like we drove, we we drove to about four or five Novotels. Yeah, right. Before eventually this guy was like, which one? Which one you got? You sent me to Novotel, I'll tell you. And I'm just sitting there going like, bro, I don't fucking know, cunt. (laughs) And then like we finally, like we pull up, it looks familiar. I'm like, so sick, dude. 
And then like my whole family, dude, like 40 of us, because yeah. we're there for a wedding, is like standing there. They're all freaking out. Sure. No one could fucking get a hold of me. They're like, oh my God, we've lost our young, rapable <laughs> son in fucking Bangkok. Yeah. I'm fucking like on the verge of tears for like four hours, yeah, dude. Yeah. Just like, like <laughs> I don't know what the fuck to do. And then like we finally pull up. As soon as we pulled up, I just went, thanks, mate. And I just jumped out because yeah. I had no money and I just walked off. And then like all of like my auntie and her husband and he has like five brothers and like mates and stuff who are all like country boys. So they're yeah, all yeah. like look kind of pretty scary if you're a small Thai man. Yeah, for sure. And he just comes up and then <laughs> he goes, he tried to say like, oh, he owes me like fucking like 1200 baht or something, mm. which is like crazy money over there yeah. and then like all of my uncles were like fuck off mate we're not paying you fucking that we'll give you fucking 200 baht get the fuck out of here like this. <laughs> and they're all like no nah, fuck off you're trying to rip us off and like this poor cunt's been driving me around for like five hours <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like oh if I, I just went up to my like, mom <laughs> and just went to my mom these guys were like fuck off cunt you're trying to rip us off yeah. like these dudes they're all fucking pissed because yeah, yeah, they've been yeah. on the piss since we got here they're all fucking like, some of them are in a fucking blackout like we're gonna fucking beat this cunt yeah. did yeah. you abduct down yeah, dude, this fucking kid guy's just like, bro, I've just done like six hours of work, and they're like, we'll give you a fucking 200 baht, get the fuck out of here, cunt. And they're all, some of them's like throwing shit at this fucking thing, and then he just fucking drives off, and I was just like, Phew. nearly fucking died, bro, nearly got raped. Fuck yeah, couldn't even get raped in Thailand. Yeah. No, nah, I couldn't even get raped. That's in how Thailand. ugly he was <laughs> yeah, as a kid. For sure. <laughs> for sure. I've got a piss before this next story. Is that cool? Yeah, you boys take that. a little piss break. I need a piss as yeah, well. Sweet. All right, back from the fucking piss break. The mandatory piss break. The, I had yeah. about seven an episode. Yeah, yeah. So you've done really have, well this yeah, episode. I, yeah, I've, I've noticed that listening to your pod. I'm like, fuck. Yeah, you always I, have a lot of piss breaks. I, it's it's always me. Yeah. And I've I don't know. Like maybe I got a UTI that's just undiagnosed. <laughs> yeah. But I, as soon as I have one beer, it like equates yeah. two pisses. And a disgraceful thing that I will admit on camera. Is one time I was I was on a, on the sesh hard with the boys and one of my mates was like I cannot believe how much he pissed. He's like, "Are you like a fucking male dog walking? Like it's just little squirts." Yeah. And I was like, "Bro, I reckon I I reckon I I piss out a beer every time I yeah. piss." I'm the same way. And I've got this thing where like I rarely rarely get hungover, and I don't know if it's because like the frequency that I piss when I'm on the piss. And my friend's like, you don't piss out a schooner. And I was like, bro, I bet you my bottom dollar I do. <laughs> so I grabbed my skewy, like I've just fucking pounded it yeah. and took it into the bathroom with me. And then was like, let's put this theory to the test. Oh, bro, shit. the only thing that was missing was like the head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I like yeah. took a photo of it and just fucking like tipped the thing out and then just like threw the glass in like the, you know, like the bin yeah, in yeah. the toilet. So no one else had ever had to drink out of that ever again. Yeah. But I took the photo for the boys and it just looked like a clear cider that yeah, I pissed nice. out. They were like, what the <laughs> fuck? That's <laughs> crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm bad for a day. Like I, I'll piss almost after every drink. Yeah. But the only thing I can put it down to, I've got like one kidney and I'm like, oh, it must be fucking something to do with that. Why do you only have one kidney? Just got taken out when I was born. Damn, dude. Mm. Yeah, I used to use it like when I went clubbing and festivals and shit if the line was too long because I've got a big scar on my side here. Yeah. It just grew with me from when I was a kid. So at festivals and shit, I'd just be like, oh, can I jump the queue? Because it's fucking, and like drunk cunts will be like, fuck off, cunt. And I'll be like, oh, I've got one kidney, bro. And they'll be like, fuck, everyone, let him through. He's only yeah. got one kidney. I'm yeah. like, yes. Dude, that's fuck. That's wild. I love those little things like that. Like one time my mate broke his leg, but still wanted to go to Stereo Sonic. Yeah. Oh, sorry, he got his knee, he got his knee like meniscus fixed. And um, so we took him to Stereo Sonic and he was in a wheelchair and um, bro, front of the queue for anything yeah. like i think if anyone not that we condone this because it's not <laughs> what the good lord would want us to do mm. but if you ever want us to get anything into a festival i reckon just get a mate in a wheelchair yeah, and 100%. just you'll get sh you like straight through security lines straight to the front of the bar sure. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. anything if you like, don't have to deal with those pesky queues Put your mate in a wheelchair. <laughs> Put your mate in a wheelchair. Just cast him up. Yeah. Just get a fucking good Paralyse your friends. 100%. And then he you won't have to wait to piss yeah, yeah. at Groove in the Moo. <laughs> <laughs> what, what religion is it when they get married? They like hold them up on the chairs. Is, yeah, it, yeah, is it Judaism? Might yeah. be, yeah. Yeah. That's what, like, at one point, that's what it turned into. Like, there was, yeah. like, these. <laughs> that one? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, Here's a bank for your 13th birthday. Yeah. There was. A <laughs> <laughs> hey, you lose a foreskin, yeah. but you get a bank. Yeah. So yeah. it's not a bad trade off. Um, yeah. There was like these juiced up Lebo guys. Just That's fucking. Sacrifice. Just yeah. like. To fucking, God. Yeah. You get, your, you get your foreskin cut. You get sucked off by an old rabbi. Yeah. But then when you get to 13, you get a bank. Exactly. So yeah. 
it's a fair trade. Dude, I don't know if you heard this, but there's been a rising rate of uh, baby Jewish boys with herpes. Really? Yeah, because uh, there's been some rabbis that because they get pussy. Dude. Yeah, yeah. They get when they get when they get circumcised. I only learned this recently. Yeah. They cut the foreskin off, and then part of the tradition is that the rabbi will suck the blood yeah. of the severed dick. Yeah, we've spoken about it. It's pretty hectic, eh? Fucking mm. wild, dude. It's crazy that parents would just be like, "That's normal." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's 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 unhealthy if you don't cut it off. <laughs> what if he gets smegma? Builder? Exactly. Save some for the rest of us. Yeah. So yeah. he gets he, <laughs> he gets fucking hurt. He gets gets uh, his dick sucked by some herpy lips, and yeah. there's just been a. Uh, an epidemic of it happening. That's nuts. Yeah, that Crazy. fucking sucks, dude. That sucks if you like lose your small infant to like a sexually transmitted yeah, disease. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Just what about getting herpes without getting puss or some <laughs> asshole? Like, yeah. yeah, you'd be fucking devastated. Like, it's getting an STI is a trade off of getting laid. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. If, if you if you get the clap but you hit it raw and you're like, look, lesson learned. I can mm. take some pills and get rid of yeah. this. It's like I'll tarp up next time. But dude, I fucking crushed it, boys. For sure, for sure. Then you've got a fucking. It's like a little fucking trophy yeah. that you've got. <laughs> Hang it up on the mantle, bro. <laughs> do you want to? Uh, do you want to let loose with your second story? Or you yeah, wanna, yeah, you because because we, we can yeah. cut that one because it was shit. <laughs> hey, I loved it. I loved it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, the other one was um, uh, I did a gig that was um, like a an appeal for the the bushfires that happened in yeah, like right. very early, like late oh, 2019, bro, 2020. I did that gig as well. <clears throat> and um, I hate dicks. I bro, <laughs> so bad. like so I fucking went up there, dude. Eight dicks. Mm. I had family members come, people who were like hadn't seen me do comedy before. True. Just fucking eight dicks. The whole show was fucked, bro. Like the whole show was just like not fucking. Can cool. I interrupt quickly as well? Nope. There was, <laughs> there was. So like, I was doing my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the whole, oh, the whole front row is like middle aged women. Right. Yeah, like eighteen months into comedy, doing dick, doing dick jokes. Fuck but yeah. Taylor, continue on. Yeah. See how much that added to your story. <laughs> yeah, right? thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. We needed that. Um, I was so lost up until then. Yeah. yeah. Now yeah. you know what. <laughs> now you know what the audience was like. Sometimes you get a bad crowd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. No, but for real, this was a bad crowd. Yeah, yeah they sucked. Yeah. <laughs> they did suck. Well, like the whole thing sucks because, like, the person who like sort of like, the MC of the show was kind of just like talking about how people have lost their like whole life <laughs> and like the thing that like their families have like spent generations and generations building up these properties and whatever yeah and they all just got taken away all of the animals that got like displaced and shit like that and then they're like oh and now you guys ready for some are you ready to laugh it was like that scene in the simpsons when he's like are you ready to laugh like after he'd just been like yeah. someone's dog has been hit in yeah. the car park yeah it was like literally like that so pretty much everyone Bombed their fucking right. dicks off, bro. I bombed so fucking hard. I was already like not feeling good about comedy because yeah. I think like the last two sets that I had done were fucking shit. True. So like I just hit this one again. Like I'm getting paid, but I just got, I just ate fucking dicks. I had friends who I worked with who came. They took me out to get drinks to like console me, yeah. basically. They were like, yeah, it's all good. Like, because they had already seen me do well. I go out and I like, I'm like drinking. I go to this fucking martini bar. I'm having espresso martinis. Dude. Yeah. So I'm just like punching these things. Having espresso martinis, I did not feel drunk at all. I just felt like I'd had heaps of fucking Red Bulls. Like I was fine or whatever. Yep. I then, to make myself feel better, try and get some pussy. Because <laughs> nice. that will make right? you feel better. Because yeah. that will make me yeah, feel exactly. better, dude. So I hit up a couple of the <laughs> sneaky links, dude. Yeah. Send send out the fucking mass message. He put the bat signal up. I put the bat. <laughs> yeah. He put the fat signal. Yeah. Up the fat yeah. signal yeah. out in the it's air. Just a, it's just a, sh a fucking shadow of him with his little knob out. For sure. Yeah. yeah it's, like a, it's like an erect penis, but then like a gut like goes out further than the penis. <laughs> yeah. Whose house around here hasn't burned down? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I put the bat signal out. Dude, one of the girls was in the audience. Right. I didn't know, but she was like a comedy fan. Mm. So like I, that's how like I met her. And then she was like, yeah, definitely like come over. She was like, I'm going to ride home because she like rode bikes everywhere because she's just been a weird bitch. <laughs> and I was like, okay, sick. I'll meet you at home. Dude, already like still reeling from it. I'll, I'm like driving in silence because you just, you know, when you have a bomb yeah, and you're yeah. just like, I can't think about anything. You can't listen to like pump up music, yeah. all the stuff like that. I'm for just sure. thinking like, fuck, is this even the right thing for me? <laughs> like, am I going to fucking do this? I'm like getting like close to her house. A week prior to this, 
I hit a kangaroo on the way home from a shitty open mic. Okay. And I, the whole left side of my car was like fucked. Like my headlight was gone. Yeah. But I'm fucking poor. I had yeah, no yeah. money. So I just like got like tape and just taped over the fucking headlight <laughs> And then just like yanked out like a bit of metal so I could still drive. Yeah. I only have one headlight and the whole side of my car is smashed. Living in a fucking one bedroom granny flat at the back of my grandparents' house. My life was going good at this fucking <laughs> sounds, moment, dude. Sounds epic. Yeah. I remember this so good. <laughs> yeah, I it. And then, so I'm driving, dude. I like drive past a cop car. Right. And then in my rear view mirror, like I'd just gone through a roundabout and I just see them do a quick Yui. And then flick their fucking lights on, dude. Oh. In my infinite wisdom, I went, I reckon I can get to her crib before these motherfuckers <laughs> catch me, dude. And I just fucking went, Meh, and I fucking went off, did a quick turn, went up another turn. And then like I was just like doing loops, like trying to lose yeah. them because I was very close to her house. Didn't work, obviously, because I was in a, like a Mazda 626 <laughs> from like 1999, dude. Like we can run faster yeah, than that fucking sure. car. They finally fucking pull me up. I'm like, fuck. Wind the window down, the copper comes up and he just goes like, hey, mate, you're still on fucking breath testing and stuff like that. Probably not a good idea for you to try and outrun us. And I just went, bro, what are you doing, man? I'm just trying to go to someone's <laughs> house. And they're like, yeah, right, oh, dude. I, By the way, I feel fine. I've only ha- felt like I only had a couple of drinks. Blow into the thing, dude. Blow over. True. And I was like, fuck. They're like, you know, because they asked me, like, have you had any drinks tonight? I was like, yeah, look, I've had a fucking couple of espresso martinis. It's all good. It's mostly coffee anyway, yeah. mate. Blow over and then they go, okay, sick, step out of the vehicle, mate. I'm like, fuck, dude, put in handcuffs, put in the back of a fucking paddy wagon, <sighs> get driven. I'm like getting driven to the fucking police station. They're going around roundabouts and shit. I don't know if you guys have been in a fucking paddy wagon, yeah, dude. Yeah. They don't give a fuck about what happens no. to you in there, dude. Yeah, I'm just like sitting here like this <laughs> and they're driving around. I'm like fucking boom, I'm like sliding into the fucking thing. I get down in the police station. There's a guy in there that's like having a fucking mental fucking breakdown, like shirtless, like kicking the fucking bars and stuff. Right. I get put in the room with him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting there going like, guys, I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm a fucking young white man, dude. I should be treated with some yeah, type of respect. For sure. Dude, if I can't I, get raped in Thailand, I can at least get <laughs> raped here. <laughs> yeah, dude. So I'm freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> dude, they confiscate all my stuff. I can't even like, this chick thinks that I'm like on her way to, on yeah. my way to her house. And then I'm like, you know, they give me another test and I go, listen, I've drinking espresso martinis. I felt like I've just had a few coffees. Like, I'm fine. Like, mm. I'm not whatever. And they're like, look, you don't really seem drunk. They let me wait out for an hour yep. and then test me again. They test me again. I blew over, but like very, very low range. Yep. So they're like, okay, sick. Look, you blown very, very low range. Like, we're not going to like detain you or anything like that. And I was like, okay, sick. And they go, um, but like, uh, you, you, we are suspending your license on the spot. Yeah. And I was like. Fuck, cunt, dude. Like, and I live, I live like thirty-five min- um, minutes, like out of Canberra at yep. the time. So I'm like, dude, I need my car for my whole fucking life. For sure. <clears throat> and then fucking everything fucking happens, dude. It's like four thirty in the fucking morning, dude. Mm. I finally get my fucking phone back, and I have like twenty to thirty <laughs> messages from this chick, like, what the fuck's going on? Whatever. Like, it turned from like you're a fucking piece of shit to like, oh, I'm concerned for your fucking yeah. safety. All that type of shit. I, I finally like messaged her back and I'm like, listen, I got pulled over. I've been arrested for fucking drink driving. Like my fucking bad, dude. And she goes, okay, sick. Do you want me to come pick you up from the police station? And I was like, yes. Mm. So she comes to pick me up from the police station, takes me back to her house. Still got some puss. <laughs> nice. Dude, that's how you turn a fucking bad story to a good for story, sure. dude. There you go. When I, uh, when I got arrested for drink driving, I didn't get any puss. Fuck. Damn. I know. Damn. Mm. Were you on your way to get some? No. Damn. I was, uh, it was, it's, it's one of my fucking can't get any worse stories that I've told a thousand times on this podcast. But just in summary for you guys, uh, I rolled my boss's brand new work truck drink driving. Holy oh, fuck. Oh, no. About, about 12 hours away from here. Holy <laughs> shit, <laughs> dude. Where were you? Uh, up near, uh, fuck, where was I? Up near like Emerald. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know Emerald. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I stayed in Emerald when I was driving from the you? sunny coast to Alice Springs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy story. I'll uh, what a shit hole. Yeah, no, nah, definitely. Fucking um, 
when I come down to Newcastle, maybe I can jump on your pod and fucking let you boys hear that one. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. For sure, man. But I reckon we should uh, wrap this up. We need to go and film this gay porno on that bed right there. Yeah. <laughs> Lucky I got the king bed, boys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you guys sharing rooms or you got another? No, nah, I got another. Oh, oh, right. Okay. He's got his own room. Yeah. Is yours a real king bed or is it two single beds pushed it's together? It's two single oh, beds. Yeah. Bed. I yeah. Fucking, fucking dude. dude. Here's, here's yeah. the thing as well. You guys can afford a fucking king mattress. Cut. Exactly. Yeah. Just uh, the only th- the only reason I think that maybe why they do this is if like they want to save this room to make it up as a family room, so you can put like two yeah fucking yeah, single beds. Yeah, but aside from that, it's fucking shit because Definitely. like if you sleep in the middle, you get like you like fall in. Yeah, yeah. That happened to me down the coast one time. I was like, man, my missus stayed in a hotel halfway through the night. I've woken up feeling I'm just fucking dropping out of the high rise, but the beds just like split apart and I fell between the mattresses. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, can I tell, can I tell yeah, one yeah. funny thing about espresso martinis? Yeah. Uh, so I, uh, one of my good mates was, uh, he got married and the, the boys were wearing cream suits yeah. and uh, bold choice for a wedding. And so like all the groomsmen are in cream suits and, at the wedding, like they're just pounding beers, and the law of a, an espresso martini is once someone sees someone with an espresso martini, everyone wants yeah. one. So this poor bartender is just literally just making espresso martini after espresso martini. The wedding, uh, the wedding is like at its like peak of like everyone dancing and going on a rampage. One of the boys who's pounded like four or five of these espresso martinis just got like the coffee rumble in the guts and he's like oh no like i'm gonna violently shit yeah and uh so he's gone to the bathroom toilet store is uh being occupied by a few of the other boys so he's like running around finds a disabled bathroom and he's like bro like he's like i shat like bad in this in this toilet (laughs) And he's like, I, he's like, cause I'm, he's like, cause I was drunk. I wasn't thinking like, you know how some bathroom doors have like a hook. Yeah. So like he could have took, took his blazer off and just hung it on the hook, but he wasn't thinking. So he's shat and like, oh. he didn't know how bad this shit was. Right. So as he's like gone to wipe, cause it's like a liquid shit. He just got shit like all <laughs> oh up God. like a cream blazer sleeve. <laughs> That's fucked. And he's like, fuck, like, what am I going to do? Like, this is fucked. And so he like he panicked, bro. Like expensive suits that were like a gift from the fucking yeah, crew. Yeah, yeah. He just had to take the fucking thing off and like fucking like ditch it in like in the bin and just be like, I'm parting ways with this. Fuck. Unbeknownst That's to nuts. him, some like shit <laughs> had like got on the back of his shirt. That's fucked. So he's gone back out of the dance floor <laughs> and he's dancing. And people are like, yo, what's that smell? <laughs> and then someone was just like, bro, is that shit on your shirt? And he's like, oh, no, God. He's like, I just had to leave the fucking... He's like, I had to leave the wedding, like, immediately. I couldn't be around there anymore. That's fucking Yeah, nuts. you got to go. So he's bounced, from the, he's bounced from the wedding, called an Uber and was like, I'm fucking done for the night. Hops in the Uber and the Uber's driving and then the Uber's like, Oh, like, bud, did you fart? Did you fart? <laughs> and he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I farted. And he's like, sorry, bro, that's a bad one. So he wants the window down. He wants the window down. And then, like, after, like, a minute, like, winds it back up. And he's like, yeah, sorry, bro, I farted again. <laughs> so he winds the windows back down. After a minute, he winds it back up. And then he, like, finally is just like, yeah, bro, can you just leave the, leave the windows <laughs> down? <laughs> Just like oh. too ashamed to admit oh, that he has oh. shit. But like what makes me laugh really hard is like not only did that happen to him in a cream suit, worst suit that that could happen in, uh, someone would have been cleaning up after that wedding mm. and it would have went to like empty the bin yeah. and just would have been like, there's a fucking like MJ Bale <laughs> blazer in here. What's going on? And then like picks it up and then just sees shit smeared all up the sleeve. And it's like, yeah, that's enough. For me. That's <laughs> yeah, I don't get paid right. enough for this shit. Fucking oath. But yeah, we'll fucking um, appreciate you boys coming on. Do you want to plug your podcast? Oh, Absolutely. I can do it. Just had a sip of beer. Yeah, so um, if you want to listen to more of our dribble, yep. it's called The Sunday Service uh, with Bradley Bishop. If you have a gander online at wherever you listen to your podcast, you'll be able to find it. Um, we're going to start filming pretty soon. We're gonna, we've got a few changes that, we're, that we've got 
that we're going to implement for the pod. So yeah, we're looking wait. forward to that. Uh, going to start pumping some clips as well. So if you guys do want to follow us on Instagram, as we mentioned, we are bad at this, but we're looking to get better. Uh, Bradley Bishop with an underscore on Instagram. And then just Taylor Coftry. But how do they yeah. spell Coftry? C O U G H T R I E. There we go. Bang. There's no there confusion now. Yeah. But yeah, thanks, boys. Mate, uh, thanks for having us pr- on. No Good worries. Fun. Anytime. Next time you're up here, fucking. We we'll get a couple of NRL greats on and fucking have a chat. Yeah, sounds, sounds good. Sounds good, man. <laughs> fucking link me up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All I know is Todd Carney and he fucking leaves me on scene. <laughs> Fuck it, we'll <laughs> dog. So, mate, you you fucking you drop this shit home, get dropped back out here. We'll go to the Caxton tonight. We'll meet a few more. Fuck yeah, let's go, boys. All right, share this shit around and uh, see us later. <laughs>